We've also got the game Raphael. Right? You've got Raphael and Donchenko. So we're bouncing around all over the place here. <laughs> but all right. Him, can you force him to change his username? Because it's I am Dimitri, but he's a GM. Like, can you make him become GM Dimitri? Maybe, maybe, maybe he <laughs> wants to be remembered as, as I am. You know, there's nothing wrong with an I am title, Robert. There's Some of us have an I am title by choice. <laughs> Not everybody wants to be a grandmaster. What? Don't cry on camera. <laughs> Uh, we don't have to change our usernames if we don't want to. <laughs> We're IMs. You're people too, I know. <laughs> International I know. Masters are people too. I anyway. didn't mean to make you cry. Robert, you're back. And my beard has not grown back, but I'm here. You you, you look as, as young as when you first left us about five minutes ago. But for those who are shocked to see the Grandmaster sitting here directly to my left, Alexandra Botez under the weather today. And uh, unfortunately uh, for her, although we wish her the best getting better, but fortunately for her, we have someone like you who just can never seem to get enough chess. It's a problem. It's been a curse since I was a child. You know, sometimes I should sleep, but instead I'm commentating chess matches with my good friend here, Danny Wrench, my partner in crime. Well, can't say how much I appreciate it. This is our first Pro Chess League show together for this year, at least in the 2019 season. Um, but of course, we will be preparing for many more to come, especially in the playoffs and in the uh, the actual live finals, which is coming up May 4th and 5th, for those of you who don't know. Uh, but all right, Robert, the games are already underway. The, uh, the curveball here to get you set up quickly from your show with Anna to this has, has us uh, just jumping into things now. But let's talk a little bit about uh, who we have already on the board right now. We've got Maxime Vache Legrov, the highest rated player currently underway, taking on uh, the team that's led by one of the other top players in the Central Division, that being Jan Christoph Duda. So first, Maxime Vache Legrov. Secondly, JKD, your thoughts on what we're going to see here in this matchup between the Blockbusters and the Migraines. I'm super pumped for it, honestly. And I had just been reading before commentary went underway with I mean, Ana earlier that Duda is going to be playing a match against Hikaru Nakamura in St. Louis, the champion showdown. So Duda has just been on the forefront of my mind. And I mean, this is going to be a great match. And with MVL, you just sort of expect him to lead the charge for the Marseille Migrants. He's not always yep. going to win all four games, but especially when you have Duda 
to face in the final round. But you see in this first game that we have on the board here, he's up a pawn. He's about to develop against Augustin Drouin. I've never heard of this player before. Augustin but... Drouin. I like to say droid. 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 Well, uh, MVL just stole a pawn on H2 like a thief and then brought his queen back. I think he's just up a clear pawn in this game and and already much better. So we've mentioned JKD a couple times now. Let's actually bring up that game if we can here. Jan Christoph due to Polish Fighter 3000. Uh, he is he is taking on the board four for the the migraines. That's Mark Andrea Marazi Marat Marazi Mara Izzy Izzy. <laughs> You get I, it. I, yeah, I, I, Morizzi. Morizzi. I was waiting for you. Um, all right, so as you said, uh, young Christoph Duda, a rising star, now now paired off against a Nakamura in a future St. Louis event. Maybe they saw his performance. St. Louis, you know, looking looking to repeat some of the magic that young Christoph Duda brought to the Speed Chess Championship. Uh, but uh, your thoughts here on what he has to do for the blockbusters to get a win against the migraines. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really like Black's position at all. Yes, White has these double pawns, which can be a problem in an endgame because it's hard to create a pass pawn when you have double pawns. But I look at this position and say, where are Black's pieces going? Mm -hmm. White has a very clear plan. Rook H1 to D1 to follow. Where's this bishop on C8 going to go? You can't go to E6 because I trade and then infiltrate via D7. If you go to F5, well, at some point I might play F3, G4 myself and continue kicking your bishop. So I'm really liking Mark Andrea's position thus far, and I just... I don't see an active plan for Duda. He'll play bishop c7. He'll play maybe bishop f5 at the right moment. But it just feels like there's not going to be much more than striving for equality, at least in the next, say, 10 moves. I agree. Um, it makes me think that perhaps black should consider a move like h5. I think the plan you highlighted of f3 and g4 is super strong because, as you said, if this bishop leaves the diagonal from f5, d7 is instantly open for business. And and now actually we see JKD just put the bishop on f5. So maybe maybe he'll play h5 after that, right? Your idea of f3 uh, combined with what I was suggesting, perhaps maybe he has h5 as a plan to stop g4. Yeah, definitely because you want to play e4 after f3 at some moment. But if you play e4 too quickly, then perhaps um, White will be able to just sort of ignore it and play a move like f4. And well, I, I even just played G4 on the analysis board where you could follow it maybe by F4, and White just has a huge storm on your idea. Yeah, I was worried, though, if E takes F3 happens, my bishop on E3 will be hanging in some variation. So you have to, I don't know, it's calculated it, but um, that kind of opposite color bishop might still give White some chances. It's just, um, yeah, you have, to, you have to time this right. F3, you have to make sure that you're not being met by E4 because that can be a problem. But, yeah, I mean, right. White doesn't have to go F3 either. White can, as I say, can play H5 himself. Maritza playing very well here. And h5 has the idea of taking away the g6 square retreat of the bishop, and perhaps then we'll come back to this this focus on. But I, I love how you highlighted just sort of the key aspect of this game being what's going to happen with this light square bishop, right? Because if this bishop disappears, white owns all the cards, right? White, white has all the cards. I don't know if you could own cards, but I just said it, right? You can have cards. You don't own a deck of cards? I, I do own a deck of cards. It's the so, kind with, like, the Mickey Mouse on it. It's like Danny, a, who, who owns those cards? Talia owns the cards. Exactly. Yeah, so you got to exactly. take pride in those cards. <laughs> Robert knows my family too well. Well, all right, so JKD plays H6. He is going to find safety for this bishop, but let's let's watch for this storyline that Robert has highlighted in terms of whether the seventh rank ends up belonging to White and whether that's enough for uh, Marazzi to get a, a huge upset, right? Yeah, I mean, over here, I mean, actually... even, even a draw would be a huge upset here, right? Absolutely. Danny, I'm thinking of another idea. Can you play? He went rook hd1. But when I see this pawn on h6, I think, can I play g4, g5 and open up the king side? So rook to g1 was a secondary idea that actually just came to my mind. And maybe I could play rook g1, g4, g5 and right. gain more space. But Well, that okay. makes me think that could we be even more aggressive with your idea? Was g4 a move right away and then rook g1 because there's tactics on bishop takes h6 in a lot of positions, right? Perhaps just unnecessary, but certainly something that you had to start thinking about. Yeah, actually, that might have been a very worthwhile attempt there to play for g4. Um, okay. you, you maybe, yeah, maybe black can escape with bishop g4 and bishop back to e6 to trade off those bishops. But yeah, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. And now, well, f3 is still tempting for sure. Yeah. But I guess f3, e4, it's always the problem. I don't know. 
Wow. Yeah, that's an important counter shot. And again, Black is Black is striving here to make sure uh, he gets enough enough threats that White can't just focus on the seventh rank infiltration. So, okay, interesting stuff here. We see a dynamic where the much stronger player is kind of uh, having having to keep the balance and then hopefully maybe outplay his low rate opponent. Um, not not the storyline that we have on the board one for the migraines. If we check back on that just to show everybody, we're not going to spend too much time here. But Maxime Vache Legrave. Uh, already just clearly better here on the analysis board as Black just up a pawn. Let's yeah. talk about another game going on. That's Tregubov versus username Mazatovic. Um, this one is much more unclear and makes me wonder exactly how did we get here. Yeah, this probably, is a probably what you're guy. wondering after you just did four hours of commentary. You're like, why did I agree to do this again? Exactly, how did I get here? Yeah, how did I get in this chair? How did I get into a commentary partnership with you? And how did... Maze get here against Dragubo because Black's up a pawn, but the pieces are undeveloped and the G7 yeah. square. I don't know what's going on here, man. Yeah, let's back up real quick on the analysis board to show you the opening. E4, C5. We have a Taimon of Sicilian with B3, which is um, not not the most unpopular way to approach the a bit of a sideline, but but something that is a, a kind of principled for white to bring the dark square bishop to this diagonal when black has already pushed the e6 pawn here. Knight a3, that's an interesting uh, kind of line with the knight to come to c4. Tregubov seems to be prepared for this, though. If we're looking at the clock in terms of how they manage time, uh, regardless of what's happening on the board, Black Black played pretty quickly and is currently still up a couple minutes, even in the live position after G3 Bishop E7. So I love that move, Danny Bishop E7, because he's saying just saying I don't even care about the G7 pawn. Yeah, because it's funny. I was saying how Black is not developed, but then White's not really developed either. So if you take right. on G7, I can just maybe play Bishop F6 right away. But yeah, also that, that's I what I was hoping you were going to say. You know, I love the exchange sack, right? Just give it up and own the dark squares. Yeah, and the king is going to get stuck in the center, and the a1 rook will be hanging in many variations. It might not even be necessary to give up the rook. You can play rook g8 as well, but bishop f6 coming, and you're not going to like it if you have the white side of this position. It's a great point. You know, okay, we're going to find out exactly whether Tregubov, uh, exactly what he had in store, whether it's the exchange sack. Yes! My first exchange sack of the day. Why did that get me so excited? I don't know. Lots of coffee, apparently. I mean, excited. lots of coffee and also lots of precise chess calculation because... Yeah. This bishop g7, I mean, this is just looks terrible for white. And this is very disappointing if you're a fan of the, the blitz streams. I almost call them yeah. the blockbusters because that's what they were last year. But oh, I keep calling them the blockbusters. They're the blitz streams? Yeah, they're the con blitz streams. Well, let's, let's, hope the let's hope the Dallas Stars don't hear about that. <laughs> well, the Dallas was a team of destiny yesterday winning 4 <laughs> right. That was crazy. Also, if you think about it, Danny, I've done the last three shifts of commentary because I was the late night shift. Then I was the morning shift, and now I'm the afternoon shift here. No rest for me. You are literally the rock that holds Chess.com's commentary together, and you know it. I've told you that. <laughs> and your and your mom and your mom knows it too. Your mom knows how appreciated you are. Yeah, no, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the bishop's coming to c3 now, and uh, this is this is a position where Robert highlighted the point of bishop e7 so well that yes, black was down in development as part of white's compensation for the pawn, but uh, white also. D you know, was lacking development, especially with the king in the center. And uh, I love this whole idea. I mean, this is C3 is calling is calling Black's name, and I don't really know. I don't really know what White does. You know, you know, Black is doing well here when he's down the exchange, and but but really holds all the threats. That this could be an exciting one. Maybe maybe our first candidate of game of the week here on this show. Yeah, I mean, seriously, what do you even do as White? Because not only is Bishop A1 a threat, you can even play ideas like Queen to F6 just to ignore everything and try to mate down the F-file, or Bishop C3 check and then Queen F6. Ah, yeah, this looks really, really, really bad thus far. Maybe Bishop G2 and just hope that you're holding your position together. Because Bishop G2, what's White's, excuse me, what's Black's follow-up there? If you play Bishop well, C3 check... I guess if check, you're just putting the king on F1? Yeah, and then you t if you take the rook, which I don't advise, I'd probably not take the rook, but e takes d5 there. But if I take the rook, then queen takes a1, and now that queen's running to the h8 square, it feels mm -hmm. like there's some counterplay. Not some, there's actually quite a decent amount of counterplay there for white. Yeah, and e takes d5 is a nice move by Robert because it highlights for everyone that white can't just take everything because at the end of this line, maybe a1 hangs. Although maybe white could because actually the e4 knight would be hanging with check. So it's, oh, you it's not totally so simple as to whether white could get away with that. Although maybe after knight d5, I take you on d5, you have queen d5, and they have bishop b7, as in like intermezzo, protecting with knight e4, attacking your queen. 
but it's getting really complex and I have no idea who's okay. better. In yeah, I I'm showing that line on the board so everyone can see it. At BJH13 in the chat says, Danny scares me. What scares me is how much FaceTime BJH is getting with Hikaru these days. He's getting a <laughs> lot of FaceTime with Hikaru. I don't know what stories will be coming out of that, but shout out to everybody in Twitch chat for the first time. Thanks for being here. Thank you to all of our mods. Thank you, uh, everyone who maybe stuck around after Robert and Anna brought things to a close there in the Eastern Division. Thank you for being here with the Central. So, Yep. All right. And... Um, another matchup is underway. Um, we can we can also check back in on the Polish fighter if you wish, Robert. You are the, the strongest player here. I'll just let you, you... You tell me where you want to go. I'm here to serve you. I'm not sure where I want to go because now that the second match is underway, that's going to get interesting. But I think... Probably have we checked out all the games? I get no. How about this game between Jules? Yeah, Moussard let's go and here. On a wall and Ricketts, which is Maxime Lagarde versus Jules Moussard. Um, a lot of this is this a lot of French on French action today. Yeah, before this we is, had the Indian Derby, and now we have the little French. What I was trying to find a word for it. Like, what what should be the word for a battle between you know French teams? Fran Something France like, France um, a France relay. The France relay, the uh, France touche. I don't know. Someone, someone has to speak French and give us something in the chat. That'd yeah, be nice. give us something. It's... All right. Well, uh, Jules Moussard is uh, playing the white pieces here against Maxime Lagarde. Um, not sure. Not sure whether Black's gonna have enough for any real winning chances in this end game. Um, yeah, I have something. It looked better a couple of moves ago. It still looks good, right? Like F4, they just play Knight F5, just get your pieces a little further up the board. So, I mean, that looks promising. And what I noticed, Danny, when I see this pawn on B3, at some moment I have to consider Bishop takes C3 as a sacrifice. Yeah. Because that pawn will push to B2 and then potentially to B1. And, well, that would be a nice young lady on that square. So F4 a, followed by Knight F5 feels like the right It's initial. a fantastic point, actually. In fact, it's possible, it's possible that... Black is threatening something like that right away. Just to show everybody the line Robert's talking about, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and then b2. The point here is that, okay, white could bring a knight to d2 and then certainly give the minor piece back on a on a new a new lady there on b1. But but that's a tactic you have to keep in mind in any of your own games whenever you have pawns that are that are so far extended up the board, right? You, you can't can't forget the idea that a pawn when it reaches the other end becomes a queen. So it might be worth just about anybody to to give up something to make it get there. Yep. So um, yeah, it won't happen yet. I see someone in the chat saying knight d2 comes. Oh, it's that's DJ Guards, my good friend. But yes, knight d2 in the moment will happen. But just keep an eye on the bishop c3 because let's say the knights are kicked away with a g4 move at some point. Right. The knight has to go to e1 to protect g2. It's just, you know, black clearly picks up steam here. Knight f5. I would play that immediately. Knight f5. Even, even knight d5. I mean, knight d5 also has, has ideas of poking c3. Okay, he likes your move better. I guess the... The main thing here is the knight on f5 also has the potential of coming to g7 and gobbling up the h5 pawn in some positions. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Okay, I expect white to just keep, or sorry, black to just keep the bishop on the board here, whether it's bishop c2 check or bishop d5. Both seem good. Well, now that you mention it, I like your idea of bishop d5 and then go to f7 just to win that h5 pawn. Okay. Because you, 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 you pointed me to it. You said, oh, then I can go to g7, but that bishop from f7 will just win that h5 pawn as well. Yep. So. Somehow, well, especially if you if you have a time here, black just has white frozen. I mean, you might even have time for a five and a four to really cement that pawn in on b three, and then go and then go gobble up the h five pawn with with no risk about the b three pawn falling, right? But is he more Anna, Elsa, or Olaf? He says frozen. I, I'm just trying to. Whenever, if you're if you're going frozen, you always go Elsa. And this okay, so go I'm, full I'm Elsa. Tell you, and let I'm it tell go. you why later, but go ahead. What? I said go full Elsa and let it go. Is what you're saying? You can go full Elsa. You, okay. you never I, never go full. Uh, Never go full Olaf, <laughs> but you can go full Elsa. Yeah, okay, that, that, that sounds reasonable. All right, well, um, a lot of games going. Remind everybody what you're watching here, the 2019 season that approached us. Like, first time me and Robert are together here. This feels like we're right at home. Um, thank you, everyone who's here in the Twitch chat or at the Chess TV chat. We're following both, and we love you so much. Um, like, really. Like, Robert has, like, the biggest heart on the planet. He literally loves you. He loves you. Do Robert. I also metaphorically love them? I, I yeah. can't tell. My heart, my literal heart is just so, you know, in their good graces that I can't tell how I right. feel metaphorically. 
All right, well let's let's check out some of the games from the second matchup that's underway. Um, although, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. Call an audible. Let's back up and just run through what we've seen so far between the migraines and the blitz streams. Leon Beast here. That of course is Maxime Bache Legrave is uh, currently converting an advantage right now um, as Black against Augustine Droin. Uh, the the board one on the other way for the blitz streams. Jan Christoph Duda. Is actually actually maybe we should maybe we should focus here because we highlighted that uh, more more oh, more easy wow. yeah more was easy. doing okay and, and actually he's, he's really better. holding his own here he's better yeah I mean this position is in this end game is the three on two looks good for black but in most of these end games if you take on f four too soon maybe my king can start running to the queen side yeah okay actually. Um, it doesn't look I'll, like it's gonna be possible. He's I'll, played... I'll show that on the board though, because I think it's something that people can easily take for granted. That okay, seems symmetrical. Bishops are the same, but in symmetrical positions, if somebody has just a much more active piece than the opponent counterpart, it it, it can be a game changer. And the active king here is really why White's better. But what if you just take on f4 and play f6? How is Black, white can never break through. I mean, I'm not saying black well, is going to break through either, but... Well, but there is the bishop f3 idea and then bishop d5, perhaps. But then what? Like, if I would just sit my bishop on c8 and just kind of claim you can't make any progress, right? Just Okay, you, so you're... Uh, I, I do have the idea of relocating around to f5. Is that possible? Something like a check and then bishop f5, and I guess then you just block the other diagonal. Exactly. That's the annoying thing about having an endgame like this where the king yeah. can't infiltrate on its own. So actually, I think this will just be a draw if you trade bishops and then put this bishop on the diagonal. I don't see how black will ever make any progress, obviously, because your pawns can't move, especially with this f6, g7, h6 pawn structure. You'll never be able to push a pawn and create a passer, and white's king can't get in despite being more advanced. It looks like it should be a... Uh, yeah, a maybe, maybe black will hold. But okay, if we take a step back and just consider the big picture, remember the Pro Chess League is a team event. Yep. Uh, white getting a draw here to start against JKD is... Is not a bad result regardless. I think that what Jan Christoph Duda would be secretly hoping for is that White gets himself under enough time pressure here to maybe blow it, right? I mean, it, yeah. it is possible given that Black has seven minutes to White's two minutes. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. Oh, that's, that's but, playing for a win in a position I'm not sure you should be playing for a win. Right. But that's that's how magic happens, Robert. Doing things you're not supposed to do, and you know right. that. I'm totally with you. So Bishop okay. B6, B6 he's gonna, fourth. This is what JKD is going to do. I think what Robert's pointing out is if you can just keep the position as flexible as possible, uh, you know, now now you get you get in that range where your opponent might blunder in, in some sort of time scramble. He'll he'll just quickly keep playing moves here. Okay, even G6. He's just gonna gonna try to get White under a minute and then see what happens. Yeah. Now an issue is you're not playing F6. So if my king can run to E5 very quickly, that seems a bit problematic. So like King F4. I uh -huh. guess I can't move my king to e5 yet because my g4 pawn is hanging. But you're not playing f6, your g6 pawn is hanging. You're not playing bishop f6 because bishop c7 comes. So, I mean, white is playing this game pretty perfectly. Like, like nothing's been too difficult because of the opening and the queens were traded and all that. But Maurizzi is holding on very, yeah. very well here and just making sure that Duda has nothing concrete to speak of. Yeah, I, I agree. No, Maurizi is playing very well, um, but he's using time, so... It's a game, right? And uh, if if he gets under too much time pressure, he may not be able to win even if he is better. But I like what you highlighted about this this bishop on d8 being frozen to the idea of bishop to c7. That's really, again, why white is, is holding the cards here. Black has to find a way to to kind of not get put in Zugzwang. I mean, he can move the king back to h7, <clears throat> excuse me, but then white plays bishop e4. And right. black is almost in Zugzwang here, Robert. Like, if the bishop on d8 moves, bishop to c7. If the bishop on e6 moves, okay, maybe then bishop d5. I don't know, slowly try to work your way in. Um, yeah, you're right. There is bishop g5 check and then go back to d8. Perhaps that's a little bit of a of a trick that white has up his sleeve. But Or sorry, black. But just to show everybody, something like this happens and you can't even guard f7 because king g8, you take on g6 and the pawn's pinned. So, so this, is, this is a precarious position here for for Jan Christoph Duda which is why he's maybe using some of his time advantage now yeah no I mean this this is not what you want when you're playing someone what 600 almost 700 points lower rated than you and yeah. it's frustrating right he must be like how do I possibly come up for a win and there's nothing that I right. see that would even give me an inkling that black has any chance to win this game so very well done by the Marseille board four in Mark yep. and Drew 
and that'll be that'll be the first step perhaps toward a victory here. I mean, we we talk about the the top players needing to get it done, but we got to give uh, Mark Andrea some credit if he's able to get a draw. Um, okay, some other interesting games going. Let's keep this one. Let, let's uh, let's keep both boards up here. Let's keep uh, Morizzi's game versus Duda, and also pull up Tregubov's game versus M Mezitovic because that's that's a, a crazy one where we might have some mutual time pressure and. Things have turned around here, Robert. We, when we left this board, you and I were mutually in love with Tregubov's exchange sack for everyone just joining us. Uh, the position happened here where Tregubov sacrificed the exchange on h8, and we felt like the dark squares were just a matter of time before, before white was in trouble. But after bishop c3 check, king f1, queen f6, apparently queen f6 was a big mistake because rook a7, and white's getting a lot more counterplay uh, maybe then Tregubov bargained for. I know we said he shouldn't have taken the rook on a1, Robert, but what else do you think he could have done here a little different before allowing White's rook to a7? Well, queen of six doesn't really make sense to me because, yeah, you're teaming up your bishop and queen on the diagonal and just keeping the knight on f3 stuck because the f2 pawn, but after rook a7, which is, I mean, a pretty obvious move, if I may say. Right. And then what? Right? Like, you just gave White the extra material Right. And where's your attack coming from? Queen e2 was a nice move. Knight h4, yep. of course. And now I think you have to really just go all in. Play c4. Hope that if you take a, a white because bc4, you go bc4 back, and the open b file may lead to some kind of back rank checkmate. And he There's does it. He, hear, he hears Robert Hess's call. The call of the wild, as they say. Not to be confused with the ambulance that often drives by your house. The uh, call the of Robert Hess. The ambulance drove by earlier, but it was actually pretty quiet. It wasn't yeah. blaring its sirens, so... Well, uh, shout out to everyone in New York for keeping it safe, keeping it peaceful today. I then hope uh, so. there's I no ambulances. Um, wow. Well, okay. Maxime Vashe the Grav did get his win, by the way. If you're wondering why the migraines have that one point victory on the scoreboard, the uh, MVL took care of his business. But I like what we're looking at right here because on the left, we can see uh, a potentially huge upset in favor of the migraines if the board four can draw Jan Christoph Duda. And on the right, we've got uh, a much more even matchup on paper anyway. Two, two nearly 2,600 players thrown down in a very, very crazy game. Yeah, no, it's um, two very good matchups between... Well, this is just matchup in general between the Khan and Marseille is very interesting. And, whoa, what's going on in this Maze game? I mean, he took on h5, which that pawn looks like you're leading to your, towards an attack. You're rook on a7, queen on h5 aiming at f7, but bishop d4 was a very natural response. Now, yep. do I take on b3? Do I take the knight on e3? Like, if I go bishop takes e3, you go pawn takes e3, then I go knight takes d5. Your bishop is stuck defending the f1 square because there's checkmate oh, ideas. So this is I getting wild. I like the way you see tactics. Oh, Look at that. that. You've been doing your puzzle rush? You've been eating your Wheaties? I've done no puzzle rush. I haven't eaten any Wheaties. In fact, I've barely eaten today. So it's uh, just pure adrenaline and excitement <laughs> at having you have barely eaten today you are a hero by the way um okay well uh, the uh the white player has given back the exchange here on c8 perhaps sensing the danger um gets this bishop to h3 but I i'm not sure it was the best idea i mean because i mean in reality is black's attack any worse off now than it was before can i mean I just... he can he can bring the rook to a8 and what what was white's idea of giving back the exchange on c8 well, the rook was sort of trapped there, and I guess it was like, you know, some sort of desperate measure. But now what about just bishop takes e3? Like, I'm just going to checkmate you. Bishop e3, pawn e3. Again, your bishop is stuck defending yeah, f1. Yeah, you could even play knight takes c2 there. Or pawn takes b3, right? Just blast open your position. I mean, this is turning around again. This has been one of the most topsy-turvy games yeah. I've seen in the pro chess league. And he went knight e4. But now... Ooh, he's hitting f2. Yeah, but... Now knight g4 or queen e2, one of those moves. Knight g4 looks really good. Knight g4. I was thinking to put a piece on f5. If a knight comes into f5, just oh, like shut down too. the queen. But but maybe then we could do your move of taking taking b3 and opening the rook. So so white has to have something more forcing. Well, knight g4, if you take on f2 with the bishop, I just move my king. You went knight f5. But now bishop e3 again. Wait, bishop e3, you take with the pawn, I guess. You have to. But now you have no threat as white. So then I play c takes b3 again. This has been... Yeah a really back and forth battle and I I I don't know. I think that he took With on both B3. players under so much time pressure, it's not that surprising to see oh, the Oh nice move. When he finds knight g4. Maybe that's the move he should have played earlier. You were calling for it. Is that is that queen running out of squares? 
Look at this. If she moves anywhere off of this diagonal, queen to h8 is lights out. So queen g6, I guess, is your only move. Queen g6 and then queen h8, right? Then I have king d7. I just, I want it all, Robert. I yeah, mean, I know I want... your bishop. I mean, you have a bishop and two. I know. Knight. I want like knight takes e five check and move the knight with check. I want. I want it all. I mean, it might be. It's probably winning knight e five and just take that pawn. Yeah, this is getting crazy. This but is, I don't see any other nuts. moves. Right, I mean, queen g six. Uh, National master red spot in the chess TV chat just point out maybe black can play knight takes f two here, but I don't think so because the queen's hanging with check a ruski. That's a problem. Yeah, that would that would definitely um, not pan out. Yeah. Oh, he's saying instead of C takes B after knight G4. Or sorry, instead of C takes B before knight G4, maybe knight takes F2 was a move for black. Perhaps. We don't really have time to back up and look, but uh, interesting point there. Yeah, no, it looks like a, a definite option. Now it's just finally finding knight G4 at the right moment. Ooh. But here comes here comes queen H8 and knight takes E5, followed by... No, he's Whoa, the king her. is just running to C7, yeah. no, laughing missed... in the face of danger. Honey Badger after... doesn't care. After queen g5, there's knight takes d6 check, distracting the knight away from the protection of the queen. Oh, white missed a win right here, everybody. Knight takes d6 check. Yeah, And after knight takes d6, the queen would have just been hanging. That was the win that white missed. Yeah, that looks that was the option there. And now and, all of a sudden... Well, now he's just he's running out of firepower. White just safely takes the knight back on e5. Okay, but this is just is too much. White is, white is already down a piece, and black has the compensation with a baby girl coming <laughs> to c1. Yeah, that's a queen in the making, and I mean, it's just it's just over. Just get a queen, just get that queen. No harm wow. there. That's a that's a new queen. Sam Copeland, he's always watching. Take notes of this game. I don't know if it's game of the week or blunder of the week or somewhere. Yeah, something something happened here this week. We will say that. I don't know. It, it's hard to give a game of the week, Robert, when it was so back and forth. But ultimately, it it had us excited. So I guess that is what the people pay for. Um, <laughs> Young Christoph Duda is just holding on over in his game. Uh, by the way, for those of you who've been watching the board on the left, if we refocus on that, has White made any progress in this game, Robert? Wait, um, White, White is doing really well. In fact, why did he take the bishop on d7? If he took on d7 and then went bishop f8, wasn't he just winning the h-pawn? Was he? Let me go back and look. I move, takes, uh, takes, yeah. takes, and bishop to f8. Did he have a shake and bake? I mean, that... I'm confused now. I, I think this position still looks good for white, but now it's still that same dynamic where you have more space, but you might not be able to infiltrate. But that looks like Bishop of Eight wins the H6 pawn. Blue I'm... Wizard says, is Marizi getting it easy? <laughs> LOL. Shout Dang. out to Denny's Boris with his first terrible joke of the day. Of yeah. many more to come. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I can't, can't handle that right now. <laughs> we love Denny's Boros. Seriously, though, thanks for being here. Uh, in the Chess TV chat or the Twitch TV chat, wherever you shall reside in your chatting ways. Thank you for being here. Can somebody explain to me why Bishop takes d7 wasn't played? I'm still lost. I'm, I'm back on the analysis board. I'm showing it. I think one idea was if takes, takes, Bishop f8, King to f7, Bishop h6. After 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 Bishop h6, King f7, the Bishop would have been trapped. But then I don't just go King e4, King f5. It's not like you can make yeah, any progress. No, well. you're right. I mean, it doesn't look like... That was a path to hold. So perhaps Robert's right that uh, Morizi just just missed his chance. Well, may to simplify I mean, maybe the, the position what you're was was holding, but it just looked yeah looked strange to me. You, what do you think the psychology is there, Robert? You think that partly it's like the low-rated player, nervous under time pressure, just kind of forgets that he's the only one who can win, and and it, you know you start settling psychologically on a draw even before the the half point happens, right? Right. I definitely think that's the problem. Is like you just don't want to do anything to take a risk to give your opponent some kind of counterplay so that you could right. possibly lose. Like you said, you're playing the rating and not the board, and that's a big right. problem. Yes. All right. Well, uh, speaking of playing the rating and not the board, uh, we have a lot of other high and low rated matchups to get to. I'm just going to run through the analysis board to show you real quick that uh, Jorg Meyer has also started his game. The other north of 2,700 plus player here in the central division um so we'll keep an eye on the matchup between the turtles and the snowballs uh but there's other games that are further along i wanted to bring up this one here with Aryantari playing for the gnomes okay um against rafael lagunao lagunov lagunao lagunov uh later 
No? Okay. I, I like it. That was good. No, I, nope, I raised no. my eyebrow. You didn't see it. It was good. I couldn't see it. I'm sorry. I can't see you. Yeah. Um, so right here in this game with Tari. Wait, what's the material count? Tari's up a pawn. Yeah, he's up a pawn, and he's holding the compensation. Here comes knight e5, and knight takes g4 with check. Yeah. Knight e5 check is devastating. C4, g4, all pawns are hanging. The knight has to stay on c2 for... Is it Laguna or Laguna? Now I'm, I don't know. Someone, someone give us the answer to that question. But um, I, I can't think about anything else now. You, you've totally dismantled my mind. Danny, I'm, I'm just done. I, I don't know. I don't say. know. I, I don't know how to help you here. You know, I can only do so much. Greg Shahadi, you're the pro, uh, commissioner of the Pro Chess League. Someone <laughs> says Laguna with a V. Okay. Tell cool. us. Tell us what it is. Um, all right, well, Ariantari looks like he's about to help the Gnomes get on the board first. What other games in this matchup uh, versus the Bears do the Gnomes have going? Um, There's a good question, though, in this actually uh, Lagunov game here because Knight takes B4 was the question. Like, can't White just sacrifice the piece? In, which game are you talking about? In the Tari game against Lagunov, Knight takes B4 ah. in this position. But I think that there, the issue... What that is, once you do take on b4 uh, for white, now I can take on d4 because your knight was protecting the pawn. So I yep. go rook to d4 with check, and then I won a pawn. All the rest of your pawns are hanging after that, so I don't even need the piece. The pawns are even more important here. Yeah. No, I think I think uh, Lagunov, I'm going to say Lagunov until further notice, um, did what he thought was right. Okay, but he's, he's just uh, on the defensive here. I think black can choose between moves like knight to c3, um, yeah, knight c3 looks good. Knight c3 um, looks good. Um, maybe knight I, I thought I had another thing to suggest, but maybe I don't. Yeah, maybe knight d6, just going after the c4 pawn. Knight b6, but that's oh no, you said knight d6. Yeah, d6. Got it. I mean, maybe knight b6 is good too, but knight d6 felt like the other knight should be brought into the game here. Yeah, I guess the nice thing is that c4 is hanging with check in a lot of lines, so the point everybody yeah. is even a move like this would work because the knight takes on c4 with check, and then who knows what follows. Rook to d2, the other knight coming to e5. So uh, the the miss the misheardness I had of whether it was b or d. I get my b's and d's confused, by the way. Um, Some people are p's and q's, you're b's and d's. You know, there you go. Um, but maybe the... <laughs> I don't know where that was going, but I love it. All right, knight to c3, rook b3. Um Okay, black is black is uh, choosing his his flavor here and just right. plays it solid. B six, support the protected pass pawn by supporting the pawn behind it. Right, we're all supporting each other here. Yep, this looks very bad for white. So I think we can move on from this okay. game. Tari um, is doing work. Let's uh, let's show the tactic that ended the game between in between move and uh, Olympus. Mons 905. Just a nice little back rank sassiness. Just wanted to show it. Oof. Uh, black recognizing that... Uh, white recognizing that Black really couldn't get away with taking this pawn after trade in Rook to D1. And that's a skewer, kids. So if you don't know your tactics, there you go. And uh, Black just is losing material with uh, with the pin to the back rank here. Pin emote. Anyway, just wanted to show that. A little bit of fun. Yeah, All right. that was really nice. And Bishop G4 was a really nice inclusion there. Yeah. Cute yeah, little intermezzo to take advantage of the pin bishop. Sometimes I think people only think of pins at lower levels, Robert, as far as like, you know, pin to a king or a bishop pinning a knight to the queen, right? But remember, a pin can also be to a threat, right? So here the pin is literally the fact that there's a threat of rook to d8. You're pinning a piece to a square, right? Yeah. So still worthy of a pin emote. No, absolutely right. So Aaron producer asking, let's give a shout out to Aaron. First studio C shot. Here we go. Aaron. Producer asking for the crowd. Helpful. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, he's asking why you can't take the bishop, and I'm going to show it on the board uh, with rook to d8 check. Um, Bill Lumberg behind me there. Shout out to Bill Lumberg. Um, <laughs> rook to d8 check was the uh, was the threat there or in the back rank there. Oh, the move before? Because of the rook down, right? Right? Dual back rank threats, right? We got 99 problems, and back rank problems are two of them. Um, <laughs> all right, well. I, I was so fascinated by the conversation going on there. I was, like, looking to see on the on Twitch to see the Studio C shot. Then I hear Aaron. I could just sense how happy he was to figure that out there. 
I, I, I like the, the chat. So I like the added effect of Bill Lumber behind me. For those of you who aren't following twitch.tv slash uh, studio chess, you should go there and do so. Um, all right. Uh, a game that's about to heat up is the one here between Por Poroncio and David Klein. That's Alejandro Alvarado Diaz and David Klein. Um, White has what? just played the move G4 and... Actually, maybe maybe that parries all of Black's attacking threats, and suddenly Black will just uh, have to deal with with White's bishop pair and extra pawn in the center. So maybe maybe White is is doing just fine here. Yeah, where did all of Black's pawns go? That's the first thing I wonder when I see this. Position. Yeah, like, okay, now <laughs> he took on B two, and now you lose the F five pawn. So Queen G four followed by F six. Black is gonna get che checkmated first. Yeah, this is this is a real. Uh... A real issue for white. So we can back up here on the analysis board and try to show what happened. We had a G3 King's Indian attack here with an early C4. C6 was played. Now this is a very dangerous line for black to go into because the early development of a dark square bishop, or sorry, a light square bishop like this often runs into tactics like you're seeing with the queen on B3 poking at both D5 and B7. But these guys know their theory. And one of the one of the risky parts of going after this b7 pawn is now white is trying to recover in development. Black is going to bring a rook to the c file uh, or the b file and and just kind of have a big initiative. Um, so, all right, but but hold on. Where's where's the compensation beyond that? I guess the queen came back, and that's that's where all of black's pawns went, Robert. And that's how that's how Diaz just got his advantage there. Yeah, I mean the knight d4 shot that was aiming for c6 and winning the bishop on f5. That was nice as well. It just really did not look very good from David yeah. Klein here. And actually, we had this situation last night, Levy and I did, while we were commentating the game between Michael Brown and David Burches. Yeah. And Burches was white, and um, Michael Brown sacrificed a pawn. We're like, wait a second, does this actually work out, or is he just going to get in trouble? And he well, got I, I actually think I, I, I slowed down there because I was describing what Black was getting for the pawn, and I don't think we were wrong about that. And I, I, I paused back to your moment where you highlighted the – the knight d4 was actually a fork emote on c6 and f5, right? Hitting the threat of both knight c6 and knight takes f5 is what... The, I think that was actually... I think black was doing okay, at least some compensation in the position before missing this tactic. Um, you know, other moves were things like back up the bishop so you could play e5, right, without, without a center fork, things like that. But bishop d6 allowed this fork... And and that's really where I think Black's position started to unwind because you lose right. let a, yet another pawn. Um, so uh, okay, interesting to note that we, I, maybe we weren't necessarily wrong that Black could get an initiative for that pawn, but it didn't work out with some of the tactics in the middle game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I just want to point out, Dan, that Jordan Van Forest with that is Joppy two is yep. doing work on Stewie Griffin here. In fact, he's just completely winning at this point. But I, that the game caught my attention to the corner of my eye. So I felt this yeah, reason why it's it. winning yeah, is these two rooks on the last rank here force a rook trade and the a one bishop is going to be yeah. locked. No, this is, this hurts. Um, not sure what happened here. Stewie Griffin, for those of you who don't know, is a streamer. Um, and uh, Jose Herrera has his own Twitch channel and may even be streaming his own point of view right now. I'm not sure, but uh, unfortunately streaming, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a win, and uh, this was this was bad news bears. Um, okay, Daniel Forsen, also a streamer. We can just check in on that real quick. He did work on behalf of the Raptors, winning nicely with the black pieces. Um, yep. He was favored in that game, and uh, so he, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Um, yep. Let's see. A, a game that's about to end is actually this one here. It's Felix. It's Felix. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Whoa. Black is just up two points. It's, it's it's Felix is uh is playing against Johan Solomon. It's Felix is down. Uh, it was a Johan Solomon is the one who's up, uh, and up on the clock. So I guess this this may be kind of a simple conversion from here. But oh, are we gonna see a time? No, oh, uh, not gonna see someone lose on time. Three seconds. I wasn't even paying attention to the clock over there. And A4 should be good. You know, you're going to lose your F7 pawn, but that A pawn's running very fast. But instead of A4, I guess you could play. I don't know what else can you do. Rook. I'm sorry, Knight D5. Yeah. Yeah. 
Knight d5 in. Okay, the threat of knight to knight to d6 is is the only thing that Solomon really has to worry about here. For those of you wondering why white didn't take on f7 and then play knight d6 forky mode, this transition, although it wins a pawn for white, is just going to be easily losing in a knight end game where black has extra pawns. So, um, okay, now black can play. I think rook b2 check and then king e6. Is that not lights out? That is lights out. Rook b2 rook check. Rook b2, move. king e6. Yep. If Solomon gets this win for the gnomes. We know that Aryantari was in position to get a win. In fact, I'll just show that on the analysis board flashing. Aryantari did indeed take that game. So the Gnomes have scored on their board one and and are probably about to score again here. Is King E7 game over, Red Rover? Very game over. I mean, you can Very just, game you, over. Look at us with the rhyme time. <laughs> move your knight. Just go knight, I don't know, C7, and then you win the knight on B7, right? Just Yeah, even, even knight. Okay, I guess you don't want to go to E3. Um, because then rook d3. Yeah. So n okay. any knight move should be good. Any knight move. Ooh, he takes right. it and goes to the rook ending? That's shocking. Yeah, he's going to run his king to b4, but this is okay. much harder than just moving your knight away, so I agree it, with you. It's still pretty easily winning, and, and part of the reason, everybody, is you've got the rook in the, uh, in the bad spot of being in front of the pawn. We always say rook endings. White wants the rook behind the pawn, not, not in a situation like this, so... Despite the weird technique, maybe by Solomon, this is uh, this is gonna convert itself pretty smoothly. Yeah, and, and Rook C7 was not at all necessary because yeah. he thought he was going Rook C1 and saying, "Okay, I'm gonna get a queen." But the but Rook C1 rook is two, yeah. yeah, exactly. So that was a wasted tempo. It doesn't. It's not gonna end up costing him, but sometimes it does. Yep. Okay. Uh, Black is making this slightly unnecessary, but still should be easily winning. Um, yeah, he's cut the king off. He's going to bring his king to b2, c3, d4, yep. etc. It's good to keep keep uh, keep in mind what your next transition is whenever you're converting an advantage, right? So what Black is doing is saying, look, I'm going to bring the king up and win this pawn, and at the right time I can even just give up my rook for this pawn. Okay. Or this way. This will be an even faster way to do it, and uh, surprise that uh, Blahberger hasn't resigned yet, right? As I say that, he does resign. So it's Felix. Guess what? It's a loss. No, just kidding. The Bears fall here. The Gnomes have taken a 3-1 lead, I believe, into the second round of play. And the next set of games between the Migraines and the Blitzstream are underway. And let's give a shout-out to Maxime Vacher-Legrave real quick, Robert. He's one of the newest streamers on yep. the scene. And uh, that's actually a live shot of his channel right now. So if you are following us at twitch.tv slash chess, thanks for being here. Don't go anywhere. But but also, open up a new tab and go to twitch.tv slash mvlchess if you didn't know the French number one and world number six, I believe, right now streams regularly on Twitch, his own perspective. Then now you do. That's Maxime. He, hey, Maxime. Is, is he Looking good, buddy. <laughs> is he streaming in French or in English? English, I believe. Oh. Um, Although one of the coolest things about his stream is that you can go there and learn French if you do speak English. So there you go. There's so many things available to you in the chess world on Twitch. And uh, all 3,500 of you with us just went and gave him a follow. I know you did because because you do what you're told. That's what people on Twitch do. Um, I, love, I love the maybe line. Maybe we can add him to the follow extensions there if we can get some of those going. Um, all right. Well, MVL is going to now try to do work against the board three for the Blitzstream. That is Sebastian Maze. Oh, that's a really good friend of his. In fact, I believe they work together. I think yeah. Maze is one of his seconds. Yeah, but there's there's a there's a cross call it cross country rivalry, and I I don't want to reveal too much of the behind the scenes that that we're privy to. But I know that there, there's some rivalry here between the migraines and the Blitzstream. For those who don't know, again, um, can how do we say it? Con can, Kane? con. Oh, con. Con. I think the con Blitzstream. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't, I can't say it anymore. I'll tell you that much. Uh, oh, but yeah. the uh, the Blitzstream and the Migraines are both based out of France, and so you you've seen players flip flop and switch teams, right? Kind of like, you know, it's kind of like uh, you know Johnny Damon going to the Yankees. He would have never have done that. Oh wait, right there you go. So oh boy, look at you starting some trouble here. Well, I know how much you love baseball references. Hate baseball. So that, you know that, and you're doing it on purpose. Danny, I'm doing you a favor. I didn't have to join you here. I could left you all by your You're right, you're right. And thank you so much for being here. Um, <laughs> all right, well, White has a huge center in the game with Jan Christoph Duda versus Jules Moussard. Um, this is this is awkward. Now, JKD dropped a half point in his first game, for those of you who just got here, which was a big upset in favor of the Migraines. 
Uh, but but here he looks like he's off to a good start, and I'm spying that C6 square, and I like it. I want to I want to put a pony on it. What do you think? No, I completely agree. That's why the knight went over to C2. Right after yeah. E5, you could go knight C6 right away. Wait, wait, wait. After E5, so he didn't want to take Ampassant and win the rook on A8 for the bishop. So then that was an, actually an exchange sacrifice by Black, saying that if you take on A8, I take back with my queen, yep. and then I have full compensation in the form of that long diagonal. So that makes yep. sense. And he went knight c2 so that later he can play knight b4 and aim for the c6 square, like you were saying. Yeah, I just showed that line on the board, and again, we've had a, we've had a theme of that today. <laughs> yeah, with that true. We've had a theme, not necessarily between the con blockbuster uh, blitzstream. Yeah. Wow. Um, welcome to the show, everybody. Coffee <laughs> time. Um, yeah, but no, uh, I mean... no, it's been a it's been a bit of a theme, and I think it's instructive. I think for for players of all levels to be reminded that what matters is your ability to create threats, your ability to have a plan. And so you see threats and, and ideas like that at high levels a lot where Black is pointing out, look, the Rook in this position, while worth 5 versus 3, is is actually not even worth as much as a light square bishop here. And so just good to always keep those ideas in mind in your own games. Look for opportunities um, for those kinds of dynamic ideas. So, um, Yeah, absolutely. And it just goes to show that Rooks need open files Bishops need open diagonal. Just by how yep. the pieces move in that position, there were no open files to work with, whereas Black would have controlled the game's longest diagonal. All right, well, Rook to EA is played by Moussard, who um, probably, in order to get counterplay, is, is looking to punch that pawn to E4. And one of the interesting things is, okay, if Black puts the pawn to E4, he's giving the D4 square back to that knight on C2. That right. was weird. Shout out to Windows. For a buggy, a, bu a bug. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just had a weird, weird bug happen with Windows. Not a chess.com bug for once. So there you go. Um, if uh, if e4 comes in, the knight comes back to d4. So so what's the other purpose of the rook going to e8? Is he is he using the f8 square as a routing post, or maybe he's going to move the knight from h7 to, to h7 and play f5 and then e4? Kind of slow play this idea of. The ultimate goal, Robert, is to open up this bishop on the diagonal g7, a1, right? That's kind right. of the idea. Right. But at the same time, if you ever play e4, you have to worry, have I extended too far? Is that pawn become a target? Now, right. your plan, which makes perfect sense to me, with knight moving away and playing for f5, then I'll cast on play e4. So I'll meet f5 with e4 just to challenge you in the center because there are some King's Indian elements in this position, right, where your bishops on g7 will be blockaded by your pawn on e5, and white can then just counter very quickly on the king side, especially with your rook on e8 rather than on f8. Well, this one's just getting going. I think it'll be instructive to come back here in a few moments and see what happened in this middle game. As we said, the storyline, JKD having a big space advantage for white. And, ooh, and whether black's going to risk e4, here he does it, giving back the d4 square. And like you said, Robert, maybe giving himself a target. But all right, let's come back to this just because there's other matchups that we haven't touched on yet, and there are some games perhaps about to reach their conclusion, starting with Jorg Meyer versus Jerry77. Um, the uh, the game here between the Snowballs Board 1, that's Jorg Meyer, versus uh, Yurne Skuala, Board 4, for the oh, we uh, Turtles. Huh? We met him at the live final last year in San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. Um, here, black is better, but it's one of those tough positions to convert because, yes, you, you have these extra B-pawns, Robert, but how do you make use of it when that bishop on D4 is so dominant, white's king is, is, is obviously the much more active one of the two? What, what would be your plan here as black to, to help the fans understand what, what you think Meyer's thinking about? Yeah, it's kind of, well, okay, now I was definitely... Did he just allow knight C3? Yeah. That's why I was going to say rook c2 by white, just to stop knight c3. Because I, what I was going to say was at some moment, knight c3 check will be very, very annoying. Now knight c3 check forces you to capture. And after I bishop c3, pawn c3, now I have threats of rook to d2. I'll put my rook behind the pawn. And critical to this is an I, end. I, I just right? dropped some fork emotes in the chat because I knew it was coming. Uh, knight to c3 is a fork of the king and rook. And I think... I think right as I sort of tried to set the tone, how difficult is this endgame going to be for Meyer to win? White just made it easy with this move Rook A2. Um, yeah. Black Black is in great shape now, as you said. I think both Rook, rook C7. to C7? No, Rook C7 for sure, because after King D3, 
The problem is this king opponent in the game is completely losing four. I think you can five. even play g5 there as black, right? Just instantly five. You could force your way six. through. You can play king g7, king f8, etc. I mean, the problem is this b pawn is so far away from the action. That's the critical yep. point. Is that in an end game, if you have a pawn on uh, the side of the board where the action isn't happening, you use it as a decoy. So the king, yep. the white king, will be stuck trying to fend off that pawn and win it. In the meantime, black will go gobble up all the pawns on the king side. And I'm just going to show that line so everyone can understand what we're talking about because I think it's super instructive to try to see that if black has the ability to come up and get all these pawns and white can never leave the B pawn behind, should be a pretty easily winning endgame for black. And so, as Robert said, an outside pass pawn in an endgame like this doesn't even have to be the one that becomes a queen. It just just has to decoy the enemy king away. Um, okay. So indeed he plays rook c7, king d4, and does he does he want to play g5, or was I wrong about that? Does he need to play the slow plan? Okay. In f6, same exact concept, right? Just the rook that is makes tied. To... I guess if takes, now he'll play king g8, king f7, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm like a just... little kid asking for confirmation. Robert, was my idea good? <laughs> well, king actually, g8. very essential to this, and this should not be overlooked, is that the fact that the white pawns are doubled. Because if those pawns were, say, on, you know, h3 and g3 rather than g2 and g3 then once i take on f6 some of these king pawn games should be an easy draw yeah and... it, it would be g4 coming in again yeah great point these double pawns are you know ones only a mother could love um <laughs> e6 probably doesn't help i think that one thing white's trying to do there robert is keep the rook ending option alive because what he's saying is if black plays a move like f5 now you could play e7 and, and force the rook to take so right. that I can stay in the rook inning. Black might even still have good winning chances there, actually. But but I think Meyer will not play a 5, and instead will just play king g7 here. That looks to be the most straightforward. Yeah, king g7, king f8, king e7. Just go right for that pawn, blockade it. And the problem for white is even if you go king g7, king d5, sure, that king gets to d6, but then what? My king is um, just in time for black to stop your pawn from rolling. So Right. That's All right, well, simple. let's keep our, our dual board view up here and bring up another one so we make sure we catch the moment that happens here if Meyer does win this is black. And let's check on the game uh, with his, I believe, fiance Ina Agress, playing the black pieces for the Snowballs. She is the co-manager. Are, are, are they in... Did I just announce something? Are they... I have no idea. Zero clue. Classic Danny. I don't know. Anyway... Ina Agress and Georg Meyer are in a relationship, in case you haven't seen their Facebook status. Um, so, Agrest is also on my fantasy team, by the way. For those of you not playing fantasy chess, then you're just missing your chance to win $10,000 every week. Hashtag you problem. But I need Ina to play well this week. She's on my fantasy team, and she is the board four for the uh, the snowballs. As we said, her, um, her other half is the board one, Georg Meyer. So... She looks to be doing pretty well here. I love the two miners for the rooks, Robert, and this move knight g4, threatening knight f6, seems seems pretty fun. No, this looks really good for white because you have three minor pieces for two rooks, which is a very strange material imbalance. But the problem is knight f6 is a pretty vicious threat. And where does your rook on e8 go? Because let's say you go rook c7, I still just go knight to f6. Yeah, it's 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 coming anyway. You might gobble h7 with check, or even just put the pony on d5 immediately. I think white has great winning chances. If you go rook e to e7, bishop h6 is checkmate, or any rook to e7. Oh, <laughs> oh can I just say I love when you talk about mating. That is just <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, it just happens every now and then. I, I miss you. That's why I got yep, to I know. It's, uh, it's, been, it's getting lonely there in New York. I'll see you soon. Okay, rook e6. Um, we've got perhaps just take the rook but what's funny is that may not even be your favorite way to win right because if you take the rook oh here black, it comes yeah black would have taken back with the pawn and it, it may even be harder to win that so i i like what ina did here wait she the wrong first. Rook. now she'll take on oh she rook c1 it doesn't matter because knight f6 is coming after you take but why didn't she take on c7 because then she would have won the other rook as well oh she was just under time pressure i know i'm making oh, I, excuses I, for her but no, you're, right. you're right i didn't actually look at the clock you're totally right i didn't realize that she yeah no, but you're right. She should have taken C7. The F5 check lights out. That's called a discovery, boys and girls. Yikes. Although, you know what's funny? Instead oh. of bishop takes C1, bishop G7 was mating too. Oh, nice. Bishop, bishop G7, F6, chopalicious. Eat your heart out. Yep. Wow. Okay, so oh. Agra strikes. Danny's fantasy team lives, and the world is happy. Um, 
keeping Georg Meyer on the left as he's going to convert on that king and pawn inning. Let's look at Raphael's game. That, of course, is Mate Sevenik for the Turtles, taking on Dimitri Kolars. Um, your thoughts? Um, that game, well, it's kind of weird. There's a pawn F6, which I like. But then again, I'm thinking, whose king is safer? At first glance, it looks like white's king is very safe. But black's king is actually safer because there's no way to attack it. So yep. if, I, if I'm black here, I think, do I play h5 and h4? I always Ooh. think king on h2, if I push that pawn there, okay, knight c5 is the logical move. But can I get a firmer grip on the king's side and try to give a checkmate? So knight c5 is just going after the e4 pawn. There's no way to protect it. Because you go rook c4, you lose b3. So this looks yeah. very nice I, for Chevenet. The more I look at this, the more I like black too. I had the same thoughts you did at first sight, thinking that white had the rook and, and uh, the the bishop in, in a situation with pawns on both sides of the board. But I think Sevenik is the one pushing here. Queen f3, which... Is she trying to inch her way to the back door here? Queen h5 to hit f7? But Wait, not anymore. Sevenik just grabs the pawn. Hanging? Wait, is that rook hanging on d1? So Wait, there's a rook queen. hanging on d1. So queen d1, queen but e5. Then, check but then queen e5. But then rook g3. But then maybe h4, h5, and or even knight e4. Well, 94, I have a queen d7 check, and I'm going to make a draw. That's what I was right. thinking about. Well, maybe that's all the game is. Maybe it'll just end in a perpetual. Well, that's, it sounds like a huge blunder. In then. fact, that's, that's what's happening on the board here. That's, that's a huge blunder because black was just much better, I thought. Yeah, I, I, uh, either he missed that he wasn't winning the rook or missed queen d7, but now for sure it's going to end in a perpetual. Um and with this being the last game of this round between the Turtles and the Snowballs, it'll it'll still be a good one for the Snowballs with three and a half out of half. But and as you said, maybe a huge a huge game that got away for Sevenik and the Turtles to not win is black. Yeah, because when you look at this position, right? If you go King B8, then Queen D8 check, King B7, Queen E7 check, and maybe that's oh, what was overlooked. And now White wins. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what was overlooked because just this is force Queen C8 check and just draw city oh, yeah i think we'll just see the we'll see the tickle here queen c8 king a7 and uh we're tickling this one home um i think i picked two snowballs on my team and collars might have been one of them which is upsetting because i you know want him to win so my team is doing even better but still a great start for baden baden all right, well, our first round is in the books officially. With that draw right there, you see, as we said, the Turtles um, falling in the first set of games, almost almost a clean sweep. They almost put up a donut there, so that's not a good start for the Turtles. Uh, but speaking of things that don't look good on camera, Robert, there was something that happened in our in my last show with Alexander Botez. Did you happen to catch what happened in that show? I did. I did. That was um, Slurp well, City. You'll be happy to know that we figured out a solution, but for those of you just getting here and wondering what exactly we're referring to, sometimes things happen during these shows that we just can't take back once it goes on the internet. Um, and all right, we'll, we'll let you see what happened last week. Actually, an emergency. That was hilarious. A vitamin C drink, emergency. Are you I'm trying try to, get, to on... get sick? Can I get it on camera without it? I... <gasps> it spilled on my computer. Ah! To... Oh no, did you actually? I Ugh. legit did. Should I Zamboni oh, it? Botes, Can oh, I man. Zamboni? Your your what? Can I Zamboni? Will you be offended by that? No. Do you know what a Zamboni is? No. It's where you drink. <laughs> it's where you drink off the table. Oh, got it. No, I think that's the classy thing to do in that's this a, situation. That's that's the when you when you commit a party. I was trying to show that it was emergency. I'm a party foul. I don't know if I want to. Should I Zamboni? That's why I use. That's why I use a. You missed a phone. lot of things. I'm Zamboniing. Oh my gosh. Okay, quick R on Zoom. Okay, I had to get off the keyboard. Zamboni. Yeah, he's taking the slurp, not in Fortnite in real life. Oh you didn't expect it, but it's happening. It okay. could be it could be a forever a forever thing. No, I dropped it on my Well, and as embarrassed as he was by me, my producer, he always takes care of me. And so the reason we played that clip is to show you why I'm about to take a sip of my little sippy that he's now gotten for me. A little sippy. Aaron, thank you for the sippy cup. I'm gonna open, take my first sip. This this is supposed to be spill proof. Are you sure you didn't steal your two year old daughter's cup? This is this is actually uh, one of the giveaways at TwitchCon that you know we didn't know would become useful. But hey, there you go. Yeah, Talia's got a few of these sippy cups, and uh, the kids were pretty proud of me for for making the change, admitting that 
always practice safe chess. Okay? When you're drinking, when when you're drinking on air, always practice safe chess, and that's what we do here on these shows. So there we go, Robert. All right. Where are we going now? I don't know, but I'm glad, you know, you're maturing. It's just amazing. You're from- <laughs> All right, let, let's go back to the uh, the matchup that started off everything today. Of course, we've got Leon Beast taking on Mazatovic. Oh, wait. That's, what's as you MVL? said, Battle of Friends. Is is MVL, is MVL going to fall in this one here? He's down a piece, but but will he find the, the counterplay he needs with the pawns? Yeah, most important thing that I think about in this position, each one square matches the color of the bishop. So if... White is going to lose all the pawns and trade the rooks. It will not be a draw like it would theoretically if that bishop was in a dark color. So that's a very important first step. Uh, when I add on this bishop. <laughs> okay, that almost got bad. All right, sorry. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> bishop c4 is played, going after a2, but also bishop coming to d5, hitting g2. <laughs> it's funny because I'm, I can't see you except for like the delayed, the little delay that there is on Twitch. So I, <laughs> I just caught the view of you. Uh, Almost spilling your water once Yeah, again. I um, despite, despite the sippy cup. I was listening though, and it, it is it is an instructive point as you said. I think the biggest issue, despite being up a piece, is that okay, uh, trading at this point isn't really necess- isn't really going to help Black's winning chances. The one trump card is that he has the bishop that's the right color square of the corner, right? So if somehow this whole thing transitioned, Black does have winning chances because the bishop is the right color corner to win here, right? Right. And um, what White really wants to do is trade off the two pawns over there on the king side. Wait, why not c8? Like c8. Yeah, would that was weird. He played a almost like he had pre-moved a4, but I think he'll get a queen, sacrifice the c for the h pawn, and then and then for sure we're headed toward a draw. Yeah, there yeah, it is. he does it. Unless, unless somehow was was MVL thinking for a second he had winning chances? He does have ten minutes to his opponent's less than sixty seconds here, right? Okay, I. I with Grandmasters playing, there's no way White has anything but a draw in sight here. But I, I started to wonder. It is it is the uh, pro chess league where, where crazy things happen. Yeah, but even a rook takes a6, it looks like you're blundering your rook as rook h6 check. But at the end, you have bishop c4 check. So if you just, yep. you know, at the end of it, you win that rook back. Indeed. No way to lose yet. Yeah, he, he, he plays bishop c4 first, which is also good enough. Um yeah, he's still trying to ho- hold out some hope that he's going to win the game. Right? Bishop b7 here, try to go rook g2 check, pick up this h-pawn. I mean, black can still win. In fact, yeah. Anna and I just covered a game in the Eastern Division where rook and bishop did beat the rook, even right. though it's a theoretically drawn position. It's very hard in blitz to survive. Okay, well, we've highlighted that a lot. Like, uh, just the rook and bishop, yes, it should be a theoretical draw if the pawns come off here, but we've said many times it's a much harder position to uh, to hold than it is to win. We're the opposite of let's say rook and knight versus rook. Right. Um, I think MVL is gonna is gonna hold here because he's not gonna make it easy for Black to win those two pawns. But but you're right. I mean Maze is Maze is the only one who can win here. Although if you go king g4 rook f4 check king h3, then that uh-huh. would be a good way to lose. Then I would be wrong about who can win. You're right. So bishop. E4, rook f2 check. It's going to be played, I think. So what would be your advice to defending a position like this? Put put yourself back in the educational chair here. We're, okay, well, now <laughs> Maze is just offering a draw. But I was going to say that if Maze didn't do that, I mean, are you are you telling people, like as a coach, Robert, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, meaning just keep your blockade? Or are you trying to do something with your pawns and advance them in any kind of way? Like what would be your advice for those watching how to hold this game even under time pressure? It's a great question. I think ideally, white has a pawn on h3, king on h2, and pawn on g4. And the reason why that setup looks very nice is because my king will always have an escape score on g3, and um, you can't actually attack the base pawn on h3. When the pawns are on h2 and g3, I feel like the light squares are vulnerable, and at some point, you know, black can try to make progress by um, just keeping the check options alive. So the rook gun will have to move from f2 at some moment, in which case then black can slowly inch forward and the idea is to go you bishop, put your bishop on e4 and king on e3 is black, and then try to just like squeeze the position, try to maybe get in a checkmating net. So that's why I think that you know you want to wait for a bit, but you can't just let black's king infiltrate. Yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of surprised Maze just played rook f3 here because even in that final position, if white if if black plays something like bishop f3 instead of the rook, 
and just try to get the king to g4 and see if you can create a mating net for your opponent. Clearly, time pressure had something to do with it, but yeah. um, interesting stuff there. He does get a draw against the board one for the migraines. That's MVL. So let's see how board one for the Blitzstream is doing. JKD looks like he's about to bounce back from his first round draw with a win over Jules Moussard here. Rook yep. c7 followed by rook takes c5. And I think Bob's your uncle. Bob is your uncle, right? I have no uncles named Bob. Got to be honest okay. with you. Okay. Just checking in again. We have a running tally sheet here um, in the office. And, uh, okay, yep, there we go. Bob, not your uncle. All right, so, um, king to d2 was played, and white's threatening a3. Yep, that's a pretty good threat. And where is that knight going? Knight takes a2, is that meant by rook takes c5? Is that the simple solution? Yeah, that's a real problem. Also, a5 is probably good as well, but, yeah, I would take on c5. And Musar might just lose on time instead. Okay, so many good-looking options. Rook F7. Oh, he's trying to mate him? <gasps> rook F7. He's going to play Rook G1, G1 and we've got mating nets. Rook F6. Oh, and that was my White first only... oh boy of the afternoon, by the way. Sorry, what? My first oh boy of the afternoon. You missed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It took Somebody lost a bet in Vegas. Um, took you a while, but... All right, White, White is doing work with the Rooks, and this is a good example of, takes... of why the Rooks are favored over the uh, the knight in an open board situation like this. Of course, it ends with a blunder. Rook takes b4 is pointing out the pin emote um, that we have ready and locked and loaded for all of you. There you go. There you go. Use use your pin emote. Um, but, all right, no, it, it's a good example of what the rooks can do in the open board. All right. Um, what other games are still going here in the matchup between the Migraines and the Blitzstream? We've got this one between uh, Morizi and Lagarde. Um, also, we have Tregubov versus uh, um, Augustin Droin, Droin, and the GM is losing. Like, let's let's keep both boards up here. Actually, let's keep this one here between Ricketts and Markin Two B on the board, but also Tregubov's game versus Uwe, one, two, three, four. Um, Did you say Uwe? Are you serious? You don't recognize the last name of a former world champion there? I knew it was Uwe. I was saying it out loud so that our show... Why would you call me out like that? Because I know how much you love your chess history and how much respect you have for what it. My, so I... my favorite game of all time is Geller Uwe, Zurich International, 1953, young man. Don't okay. lecture me about Uwe and what he's okay. capable of. You've, you've given me lectures. I just forget about them. That's right. I used to teach you at chess camps. Have you told people that? I don't remember that lecture at all. <laughs> here we go again. All right. All right. But, no, here Tregubov is, is on the grind, but unfortunately the seventh rank won't be enough. In fact, rook to c8, by the way, is threatening rook takes c6. So for those of you thinking uh, maybe – actually, no, it's not because b5, rook takes c6 would run into mate. Yep. But well, b5 is a clever move, you know, <laughs> Uh, for black, actually, if you're able to do that as well. Because if you can open up the C file, rook h1 check is a nice sacrifice, sacrificial yeah. mating attempt. So, yeah, this is this is an interesting little position here. Tregubov is losing down a piece as white, but with with uh, Droin under a minute, definitely glad we're right here on this board because something, something crazy is about to happen here. I mean, what if Tregubov runs the king away? King e1, and I just, I'm trying to get out as fast as I can. Can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Let's bring the king over here and then maybe try to use our queenside pawns. I guess, but if you go king e1, I'll give you a check on c3. And if you keep running, I'll take on f2. And I don't know. Oh, wait. No, I won't. Well, no, but if you do that, I get h7. Yeah, I just realized that. Hmm. So maybe black will swing that rook to g8 and then try to mate you via g1. Okay, rook g8. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a scary idea. I don't like that. Um. Tregubov is, is trying to think here, and this is a critical moment, obviously, because he is losing. I think objectively Tregubov knows he's worse, but that minute on the clock needs to be used wisely to try to come up with something that makes Augustine Droin think. And that's a good practical takeaway for everyone watching anyway, Re managing your time versus taking it. He wanted to make sure he came up with something as messy as possible, and on the board, look at that, C5 is played, and that might be the messy thing that helps him get the game. Do you see a B6 now? 
You have a b6, maybe bishop d4? Does that work? Well, the whole point, yeah. everybody, again, is that this bishop is poisoned. If you take the bishop, we checkmate you on the back rank. So, Shagibov is trying to do something. But he, honestly, so bishop d4. Okay, bishop if you, d4. If you take on d4, cd4, play b7. Here it comes. I have rook h1 check. Watch this thing. Oh, thing. you dirty girl. I thought about it earlier. That's why I was saying when black could have gone b5, I can open the c file. I can sacrifice my h rook to mate with my c rook. So That's, after... That, if that ends up being how the game ends, I will I will give you a back massage or okay, was, a, a an IOU coupon for one that I'll, was, that I'll never let you catch. I was hoping there would be a large sum of... Oh, here He's going comes. for it. I'm telling you it's happening. He's going for it. If I just said, I just promised okay. a back massage. I want more than a back massage. I want $500 and a back massage. Oh, he, oh, oh it's he happening. did it. He went for it. It's happening. Rook H1 mate. I can't believe it. Rook H1. You to see it. You don't get a back massage unless he sees it. You have to see it here. Rook no, H1 Rook is on the board. It's no. winning with mate on C1. No, he, no, missed, he missed it. He's losing. He's and losing now. Wins. Oh my god! He just missed mate too! No! Holy <laughs> no! That was absolutely bananas! I mapped it out for him perfectly! That is no! Unbelievable! I you and I have done how many shows have you and I done together? Like I mean at this point we're over a hundred shows, right? Oh my god, yeah. I have never seen you call like okay, it wasn't a forced mate, but you called the tactic. He goes for it on the board and misses a force checkmate. Rook h1, bishop takes, rook c1, would have been mate, and oh. in a brilliant fashion, if I might add. And instead, Tregubov comes back and wins for the migraines. Yeah, what a... Tregubov and guess who doesn't get a back massage? Yeah, I'm actually kind of happy I lost that um, bet, as uh, IRL Binky said there. There's nothing kinda... wrong with offering another guy a back massage. No, there's nothing wrong with why, it. Why, would but... you, why are you shaking your head over there? It, because that's fine. Then... Then I'd have to come find you, and then we have to hang out. And I know it would have been. First of all, I called it. I, there was no way I thought it was going to happen. It Man. should have happened. It was right there for the taking. Unbelievable. I mean, oh. That's that's current. That goes. That's my favorite 2019 uh, pro chess league season moment of the year so far. Right there. That was that was nuts. And Trigo has had two games just like this. He was probably getting mated against uh, Maze right in that first yep. game, and then his king went on. A walk on the wild side over to b8, and now here he just was getting checkmated in two moves, and it was missed. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. All right, let, let's go to the game between the gnomes and the bears because Ariantari, uh, with the white pieces, probably not winning objectively. Uh, maybe white's a little better, but the fact that he's up way on the clock is, is going to help him get this one. Black only has four seconds. Yeah, and it's probably should be level here because I don't know how white makes progress, but. You know, you play a move like King F. No, King F three. There's a check on B seven. May go for G four at some point, and then try to play F five. You need to open up something. Otherwise, it's just a closed position with no real points to make. A, I, I can't even think after the last game. I honestly am like Ste trying. Ste Steffi nine four was greatly looking forward to our back massage on camera in the chess TV chat. I just can't believe that happened. But you don't get the back massage just because you called it. Doesn't mean it, it didn't happen. So, how did he, wow. How did that happen? He, he put everything perfectly until he didn't. That was that was amazing, and he had the win. Droin was he has an upset over a grandmaster on the board. Robert, yeah. it was on the board. I just don't know what to say anymore. Robert, it was on the board. I'm I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> I just, All right, I'm um, really at a loss here. Okay, I can't well, look at chess anymore. I've been looking at chess for so many hours today. I that, I felt like I did the exact correct play-by-play -play there. And then there was like two seconds left. I'm like, is he going to find it? And then he loses. Okay, well, Aryan Chari is trying to convert this one against Felix Blauberger. Uh, what's the way to do that when your opponent's under time pressure? I'll tell you one thing I like that Tari's doing. He's just taking his time. You want your opponent to kind of sit. Um to kind of sit when they're under time pressure like this. So at some point, I think he'll try to play for g4 and and try to open up this this king side. It's objectively, again, as we said from the start, white white doesn't really have enough to, to claim a win here for the gnomes, but 
I'm expecting Tari uh, to win just because of the clock. Now he has bishop e4, maybe? No, but then queen takes b5. Yeah, so go play king f2, and then eventually... He, is queen h1 coming? Do it. Get it, oh, girl. No, play queen he, h1. He didn't what? want to give the d4 pawn, I guess. Yeah, but, I mean... Uh -oh. It's queen h1. Here, here comes some progress. We're like queen e7 feels annoying. Yeah, queen no, tar now Tari's working it. Here comes b6. Or if b6, queen a2, maybe he doesn't like it. But I think he could do it. No, bishop a6 at the end of the line. Let's show it. If b6, queen a2, bishop e2, bishop a6 is good for black. So that's why Tari will not do that. So maybe g4 now? or Yeah, I still like g4 as the ultimate way that black creates... Uh, sorry, that white creates some, some kind of problems for black, who only has 2.8 seconds. Yeah, you just want to win on time. I mean... It you're not hiding that fact. You're just trying to flag your opponent. So G4 gives your king a uh, escape route to the H4 square, and that means there's the perpetual checks being much harder to get off. Um, queen D8 is an option as well because then you, you might freak black out. Do I move my bishop or do I get a queen A2 check first? You know, what's right. the plan of action? I think G4 is what I would do. Yeah, I think G4, and again, we're, we're seeing a grandmaster victory. I like to call it an old-fashioned Georgian massage. Here, the Grandmaster is just kind of getting a win in a position that he has no business getting a win. I've lost many games like this. Yep. Um, okay. Whoa. 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 That's bad move. Bishop a6? Bishop a6 is winning for black. What in the world did Tori just do? <laughs> what is going oh on? Oh, my with these God. Games? What is going on today? <laughs> this is... He just lost and the I, game. I called. You didn't offer me a back massage, but I called this line. Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> It was like he's the one with all the extra time, and he, he had all the. I, I I just said he. I gave him the Georgian massage credit, which you know I don't hand out to anybody but Georgie Kachishvili easily. Yeah, yeah. that Georgie massage. <laughs> this <is laughs> that, so, whoa, this is so ridiculous. He went for a long think and played the worst possible continuation. He, no, seriously, he just went for a long think and then played the worst possible move on the board that I said two minutes ago was the one thing he couldn't do. Queen and F1, now Black is winning. Bishop b7 comes and checks. Bishop b7, white can resign. King g1, he's, he's, bishop b7, white resigns. Yes. Oh, he, now, okay, he played check first, which is still good enough. Because queen g1, queen e2 check. I wonder, is Hammer streaming? He's definitely streaming. Like He's got to be like, Ariantari, this is why you're not going to be the next Magnus, okay? Yeah. I don't think he's going to say anything that harsh. That's my job. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he must be devastated. But that was bad. How did this just happen? Two games in a row that we've looked at where there was a nice checkmate that was missed, and then there was this situation that was Tari trying to win and just loses. Hands his opponent the game. Is Hammer Maxime. crying? Can someone tell me if Yoon Ludwig Hammer is crying? Ma Maxime has always been there for me when it matters most, even when you're not. What did Maxime do? You'll see. Oh. Um. All right. Well, where are we going now? There's all kinds of business about to get under time pressure. Um, Daniel Forsen, streamer, has an interesting one going here. I think they're trying to Miguel ruin. Miguel, Admiral Miguel. Miguel? Miguel. Wait, I'm trying to find this game here. Uh, He's up okay. a piece. But black has some some weird threats coming over here on the king's side with the H and G pawns. Yeah, that is definitely compensation. Wait. Ooh. That pawn's gone. So never mind. Knight E four. Actually no more no more compa dump. I think just knight G five and actually all of Black's counterplays falling apart. Yep. Knight G five, knight D two. Knight G five is probably better, just getting active. E seven falls. Nice. So Forsen's gonna win this game. I mean, I just can't get over what just happened, Danny. Like, we just saw. <laughs> I know. Dude, no, sir. I mean, I know people think we're just, we are having a good time. We love each other. Thanks for being here. This is a chess show. But, hey, guess what? Uh, we uh, look, at, look at Hammer's face. He's still in shock about what Tari did. <laughs> He's still in shock. We're showing it on screen. Uh, if you're curious of channels you can follow, hold your mouse over the Twitch player here. Use that Twitch extension. Give my channel a follow, Robert's channel a follow, MVL. Hammer is streaming as well. He's not there right now, but there's a lot of channels covering the Pro Chess League. Make sure you give them all a follow before you uh, call it a day here and, and uh, leave us behind. I just...
I'm in disbelief. I mean, like you said, we're having fun. That's great. But like two straight games where it was checkmate and two overlooked and then yep. walking into checkmate essentially in a few. So, all right, I'm going to get my head together here. Crazy. What game all right, we well, looking? let's um, let's see, let's keep let's keep Daniel Forsen's game up here and see how he converts, but also bring up the game Mad Dog ninety four against Carl's DC nine six because it's uh, another game in the matchup between the Raptors and the Mosquitoes. Which, by the way, shocking that on an evolutionary level the Mosquitoes won. Can we all just appreciate that for a second? Yeah. Raptors, ver if you had asked the dinosaurs back in the day, like, yo, let's place bets, who's gonna win? Raptors or mosquitoes? Who would have thought that the mosquitoes would have out evolved the Raptors? Am I right about that? I mean, it depends. If you're playing, you know, basketball, you're all about the Raptors. But if you're playing dodgeball, you're all about the mosquitoes. Hey, this is not going to be one of those cues you do where we go from mentioning the Raptors to Kawhi Leonard to does Anthony Davis have a right to demand a trade? I know exactly what you're up to, Mister. All I want to do is talk NBA. You focus on the chess. Okay, focus on chess. Done. But yo, you're absolutely right. I mean, that was just in the terms of this league, focusing on the chess, that was a very impressive victory for the Mosquitoes. And, well, they're in fifth place. They're just out of the playoff spot right now behind Khan. Yep. So they need to keep on winning. That's what they need to do. Okay, well, if Forsen, if Forsen can, uh, can win for the Raptors there, he prevents the Mosquitoes <laughs> from doing what they did on an evolutionary level, outlasting the Raptors. But... Uh, but I think that Vander Lendy has a better chance as Black over here. Um, although the more I look at it, I actually I like the Raptors to reverse that Jurassic Park storyline. I like the Raptors to get wins on both these boards, Robert. Yeah, no, I mean, this is right now it's a critical moment for the Mosquitoes because um, they started off here down a game in the first four. So Emerald, we've been looking at his game. Wait, no, Emerald's in the Mosquitoes. He's in trouble. Yeah, so the, the Raptors are going to continue to cruise in that board. I'm just mixing up everything right now. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to take a sip of water. Danny, fix my mistakes. Okay, drunk that water. I'm good. You got that water? <sighs> yeah, I'm good. Just, you know, a lot of chess is swirling through my brain. I'm mixing teams up. The ambulance is coming. That's not for the players anymore. That's for me. But, um, yeah, so the games here, we see Carl, Carlos Diaz Camayonga. And Kamiyonga has been a very good player um, for the Raptors. Yeah, he's, he's performed well this season. Yeah, on the white side of this position, Black has this pawn on D4, which on one hand is good because it's a technically a pass pawn, but it's completely blockaded. And so white is the one who controls the pawn breaks with an eventual B5. Or perhaps on the other side of the board, you play H4 or take on G5 first and then H4. So if I'm Black, I would consider playing G4 here and then follow up with H5, but I don't know. still seems a little bit too risky on that side. But I think you highlighted it best. I mean, I think White just controls the cards because of the B5 threat coming. The, the one thing that that makes White, ha you know, gives White pause about that is that it would open up the Rook on A8. So if you're wondering why Kamiyanga doesn't just push here, everybody, it's because after the trade, Black can infiltrate something like Rook A2, which I'm not even sure is really even enough for Black. After King E1, White still has these two very powerful B and C pawns, but but you don't want to open up your opponent's rook if you don't have to, okay? Uh, un unless you want to prove the commentator wrong, and that's exactly what I just said. You don't want to open up the rook if you don't have to, but Kamayanga says, I'll show you what Raptors want. Yeah, but I, I agree with you completely. Yeah, I think I was right, though. Rook A3 is just so tempting now. Just throw that rook. There it is. Yeah, and, and, this, and this is exactly what you just highlighted. The one issue with Black's position is that even though he had this past deep pawn, there was nowhere for it to go. Now, rook a3 not only hits the bishop, but look out for the rook coming all the way over to squares like f3 or even h3 at some point if things open up. So, um, this is now a game. This is this is now a game. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, the rook can come to a2 at some moment. So, that's how the king went to e2. Bishop f3 check is a yeah. deadly threat. So, you bishop can't. Bishop check will win a piece. Can't just make some random move. So, bishop. Can't move my bishop either because if I move my bishop. To C2, then you'll go D3. You go D3 check. anyway? Yeah. So and bishop then Bishop of 3? And, and if you play King of 2, you almost walk into a checkmate. Yeah. But, okay, Black just wins material. So, yeah, these are the kind of variations that Rob and I are going to be calculating here now. And I, what what is White? Okay, Rook B2, this is nice. 
So if you trade rooks, then you lo- you're going to lose a d4 pawn. So rook back to a3. Now maybe you can just go king d2. Just start inching your king over to the queen side. Mm-hmm. Uh, another idea is actually to play f5 and then develop your bishop via f4. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, open up your bishop, which not only is useful because it hits the h6 pawn, but the bishop on f4 will help what's eventually going to come over here to the queen side, which is these are the kind of positions where you have to be really careful that the bishop pair just get loose and, and start flexing their muscles all over the place. You don't see a bishop flex much, but when no. bishops flex, it gets weird. Oh, I, I don't like that. Because now F- your knight's stuck to protect Yeah, the- F5 for black was played perhaps to stop what we were saying, the F5 move coming for white and the bishops flexing, but now black has these these targets on the light squares where the knight has to be stuck for the rest of the game. Can't you just play rook b4 and win the d-pawn, like, right away? Okay, rook c2. Wait, I don't you like know, rook c2. The one thing black has with that is he, he did make the e4 square available. And and there he goes. He plays Wait, bishop b4. Rook. <gasps> you have a rook! <laughs> <laughs> What is going on today? As soon as, oh my gosh. What is going What is going on? He just resigns. He just won a rook. What is happening today? <laughs> no. Everybody's freaking out. Yeah. It's the sippy cup stopping the Zamboni. I just don't know. A free rook. What is happening? I just can't handle this. I mean, look, Danny, I was – Doing all this commentated earlier, there were some mistakes, of course. Then we get here. I'm super thrilled to be back doing commentary with you. We're just laughing, having a good time. But this, at some point, this is, just, this is as bad of PC. It's like PCL Blunderfest Day, right? They we didn't get the invite to this Woodstock affair that's going on. I don't know. This is just nuts. Arya yeah. Tari took 45 seconds before making one move because he was probably still licking his wounds from that last game. Um, okay, the only game that still has. Um, Meaning, as far as that second round of play, is the one you see there to the left. That is Forsen's game versus Admiral. Uh, the analysis board is showing Aryantari's game, if you're wondering why I mentioned it. Um, he is just getting underway in the next set of play. But, okay, let's check back in on the match that is furthest along, starting with the one between Leon Beast and Ricketts. That's Maxime Vache Lagrave, who looks like he's going he's gonna to do what he's supposed to do against, against Lagarde. Yeah, I mean, Lagarde is a very good player, rated over 2,600. But right now, this is like a Capablanca dream. For Wait, isn't Black also up a pawn? Yeah, Black well, is was, up a pawn. I was thinking about this position with equal material and still right. a dream because um, you have an isolated D pawn. So let's say yep. you put a pawn on B3, right? You, you equal or wherever that pawn is in the B file. You equalize material, but you have this weak D pawn. The knight can blockade it via D5. It's just a very promising endgame. But now you're up a pawn and D4 is weak. And those same elements still apply. It should be completely winning for MVL yep. here. As you, as we say, right? Or maybe it's a term I overuse, which that's normal. I use a lot of a lot of terms. Shout out to Bigfoot there for the sub. Um, we've got Black has the pawn and the compensation. Um, we've also got some people playing Guess the Move. By the way, for those of you who don't know, you can do it. You can play Guess the Move at Chess.com's live server. Shout out to Abacus Finch, Diamond member. We see a lot of in the Guess the Move world. Um, yeah, and shout out to Abacus Finch because I'm actually seeing To Kill a Mockingbird this weekend uh, with yeah? my sibling. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like what, of... an old school movie theater? No, no, no there's a, a show on uh, Broadway. Oh, Broadway yeah. show. Yeah, I actually forgotten about it because my brother bought tickets a really long time ago. But this weekend, go. looking forward to it. Well, um, Rook to C8 is played. Black owns the open file, which is usually what you have in compensation when you have an isolated queen pawn. Usually white's the one with the open file. So here, black owns the file, black owns the pawn, black has the pressure. Black is okay here. Um, Let's go to the game between board one for the Blitzstream, taken on Tregubov. That is Jan Christoph Duda against Pavel Tregubov. And here... Uh Uh-oh. Queen g6 is the move as soon as you're... Oh, he just missed it with f3. Yikes. Rookie we come to a board, we bring blunders with us, right? But look at Black's 24th move. H5 was such a bad move because it allows Bishop C4 and G6 now is under attack. Like, he walked right into it. Now, Queen takes G6 check, should just at least wins one pawn, and the king is not safe either. I mean, this is unbelievable he stuff. He has Queen H6, I think, and if Bishop G7, you gobbled yet another pawn on C6. That looks pretty good. 
So Jan Kristoff is supposed to supposed to win as board one for the Blitzstream, just like MVL is. And and right now they they possess the same score. They're both one and a half out of two and look to be moving to two and a half out of three, which given that we're talking about this French rivalry matchup and it is four four currently in the score. This is uh, shaping up to be a really big last round, right? Who doesn't want it all come down to two 2800s going at it, MVL and JKD? Yes, what we were talking about before the show, or as the show was getting underway, yep. that is the matchup that everybody should keep their eye on because two of the best players in the world, they're yep. helping their teams mightily because MVL playing well, and here we see Duda just, well, he's just completely winning in this game. Now he's up Duda's completely balls. winning against Tregubov. Leon Beast and, is, is also winning um, but, in his game versus Lagarde. So Danny, what about some of the other games? Well, I was going to say, we shouldn't speak too soon. We can go to another game, but Tregubo has been the recipient of crazy blunders. In the yeah, first he's game. already gotten himself, uh, got himself, but maybe he's running out of charity, right? I mean. Yep. Yep. People aren't going to keep donating to him, I guess. Unless people want to keep donating, right? You don't want the donations to stop. I thought I told you that we won't stop. <laughs> nice. Don't stop till you get enough. Should okay, but what, what should White do here? Jokes aside, I mean, even Queen D5 is a nice move. Protects the bishop, battery to F7, and just still holds all the light squares, so you're not worried about the king over here, right? No checks. I would anticipate Queen D5 by JKD. Um, yeah, bishop D5 may be also possible. What? Queen D5 looks very good to me. I mean, like, everything you just said makes perfect sense. There are no checks on my king on H3. I'm hitting yeah. the 5 pawn as soon as I move my bishop. Queen A8 check and trading the queens. Probably is pretty so good. So I was going to say, the one worry about moving the bishop off of the e2 square is, are you... So we there's no rook takes h2. Okay, so there was no way to get the queen into e2 with check, or at least Tregibov decides that he's not even going to worry about it. Plays... Okay, but but now if the queens are traded, does white have enough winning chances? Is it just king h4, king takes h5? Maybe that's what... Nice. Okay. Pr protecting f3, attacking h5, keeping the queen tied down to f7... That's a multi-purpose move I've ever seen one. So queen f5, that maneuver, queen state check to f5. That's some really classy stuff by Duda. Yeah, very nice maneuver. And here what you see is an obstacle bishop position where despite the king being optically optically vulnerable, right? You look at the king on h3, it doesn't make you feel warm and cuddly. But without access to the color square that your opponent dominates, this bishop on g7 is essentially a bystander and any potential attack, because white owns the light square. So it's just instructive, I think, when players look at these games and feel, you know, things that make them feel queasy, right? Things that make you say, mm, 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 right? And here you see JKD just uh, dominating the light squares, which is making this a much easier conversion. Danny, I, I was listening to everything you said, but I got to take you to the Maritzi game against Sebastian Mazet, because what Maritzi's I want. up for queen for a rook, and this is a huge potential for game of the week if you scroll back eventually to move i don't know starting to move 15 it was just all Maritzi at that Mar moment marson 2b versus mazatovich you want me to go to move 15 got yeah. it like knight to d5 he, he, he started sacking things and then okay the game actually just ended as, as i was trying okay, to talk well, about let's Let's pull the main board back up to that um, JKD game, but let's keep a big board here and actually show everybody what happened in Morizi versus Maze because I think that this is instructive enough that we should show what happened. Um, keeping this uh, Morizi game versus Maze up, back to move 15. Yeah, so, you know, move 15, rook c8 was played, then knight, knight c7. c7. King d7, knight d5, and he blundered here because Maze thought if the bishop takes d5, that Maurici would take with a pawn, and he'd lose the bishop on e2. But instead, look at Maurici uncork. Rook takes d5. Crazy. Like, and after the, takes on d5, the point is that bishop g4 check would be lights out. Yep, because you're losing that rook on c8 and the pawn on b7, and everything is just falling with check, honestly. So after, so after rook takes d5, black is just black was just losing, right? Taking would have allowed bishop g4, so instead he plays queen takes e4, which loses the queen. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, again, Marizi has been good today, but he may be good enough to single-handedly help the Migraines with the match victory, right? I mean, he's supposed to be their board four. He drew Jan Kristoff Duda in the first game, if you're just joining us, and now he's beaten Grandmaster Sebastian Mazet in a brilliancy. So, um, 
We're back on the game between JKD and Tregi Buff on both boards now, but if you're just joining us, it looks like Marizi is kind of the hero for the migrants. He's giving headaches to the Blitz stream. Yeah, nice one. I had a slow laugh, kind of like the slow clap, but not happening. You know me, Danny. This is me being back in commentary with you. I can't give you the credit where you think it's due. But you'll earn it eventually. Can, can we just appreciate how good... I mean, I know you've said you like the Moscow Wizards best, but the Migraines logo has been with us since the inaugural season, the 2017 season. And how good is that logo? Yeah, that's... that's it, the Migraines point. logo gives me a headache just thinking about that. The sword? Yeah. It's like, why? Because it's just so powerful. Yeah. It's what MVL wanted. Yep. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, one of the one of the coolest things about the Migraines, they've been with us in the since the 2017 season... One of the best franchises we've had in the Pro Chess League in, in the few years of existence. And it's also managed by 2,800 Maxime Vache le Grave, right? I mean, not 2,800 anymore, but he's been there, and uh, it's an exclusive club. How often do you have somebody on that level also helping to manage a team and make them good? So one of the coolest things about the migraines. Yep. MVL is, is the people's champion, and he's streaming right now. So you can watch him at twitch.tv slash MVL Chess, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And you can hover over my face and then click on his Twitch. Okay, the, the only other game uh, going on uh, between the Migraines and the Blitzstream is Animal versus Uve, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's Jules Moussard, who is, uh, looks like he's just about to convert on a really nice win here as white. Rook takes a4, pointing out that queen to c8 and queen g8 is mate. Uh, I, I think uh, Jeroen will, will just resign here. So these Migraines... Well, I, how can I not follow it with their giving headaches to everybody <laughs> in France who's not a fan of theirs? It's time to jump on the migraines train. Yeah, I you got to ditch the blitz stream to go over to the migraines because... Yep. Okay, rook, rook to d4. Very nice. Just playing tickle with that back rank. Again, the rook can never leave everybody because queen c8 and queen g8 would be mate. So I expect Droin to resign, but even if he doesn't, the result is, uh, is clear. So the, the one game left in this match that has any doubt, I guess very small is JKD doing what he was hired to do for the Blitzstream. Should get a win against Tregoboff. Any way to stop Harry the H-Pawn from becoming a real wizard on H8? Uh, how many extra pawns does one side need until you can just say he's clearly winning? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pot? Uh, four. Wrong. Is that right? Okay. Well, um, wrong know. again. Okay. With that, the uh, Blitzstream save a little bit of face. The score will be 7-5 to five as we move into the final round of play, but the migraines are on on path to a victory. Okay, we got to go quickly to the matchup between the Snowballs and the Turtles. My girl, Ina Agrest, taking on Mate Sebenik. She's down a rook and down on the clock. Okay, not interesting. Next game. <laughs> I um, was like, wait, it looks interesting. Like, yeah. wait okay, Georg Meyer versus Boris98. That's Markoya, Markoya versus Meyer. If anybody knows how to use their rooks, it's Meyer. I'll tell you that much. So he's up two rooks and a bishop for a queen. Yep. Constantly Wait. proving the theory, if you don't use it, you lose it. He uses his rooks well and Is rarely loses them. Like, what? what? So yeah, it's just mate. Rook d7, rook c6, rook d5. Bob's your uncle. That's a ladder checkmate if I've ever seen one. Here we go. Rook c6, king e5, rook d5. Mate and bake. That's nice. That's and I helped. Nice. You, you call this one precisely yep. here. There we go. There we go. Yet another. Boom. Sweet. Thank you. Running tally. Appreciate that. Aaron, working hard over there, the producer. Okay, Meyer wins. Unfortunately, his uh, his other half lost to Mate Sebenik. But where are we at with the other games between the Snowballs and the Turtles? Well, those the, those were actually the last two of this round, so we missed the others. We'll, we'll, we'll pay closer attention to that as it goes. Um, yep. That was actually really funny, though. Aaron, props. That is Bob, your uncle counter. That was good. Uh, we've got uh, we've got some other games, as we said, now underway between the Raptors and the Mosquitoes. That evolutionary battle rages on. Where is Michael Crichton when you need him? Um, what? Okay, go to the game between Forsen and Klein, though. I mean, I was saying it out of joke, but what the bleep is on the board? <laughs> are, are they playing Bug House or something? Like I know. Okay, for the record, everybody, King takes up two was not possible because of Queen E3 and then Queen G3 mate in two. Yeah. So... And B5, look at this. What B5, is going on? B5, he's just he's, he's inducing the queen into labor over here. Queen <laughs> takes B5, C6, and it's over. 
Because <laughs> you win the rook on h1. You win the rook on h1. You oh, also have knight d3 check coming yeah, and b2's falling. You're going to win the queen probably because queen b5, c6. Where's that queen going? Only safe scores a5. Look at this combo. C6, queen a4, knight d3, king b1, knight b2, forky mode. Oh, I see the opening. This opening is hilarious as well. Do you see it? But, I, I'm going to get my forky mode on and then, and then I'll see the opening with you. Sorry, you know me. Gotta it's get those totally fine. Out. You're going to love Black's third move. Okay, what happened in this game? Richard Report style. G5! <laughs> like, a, like a boss. He just plays G5. Kids, kids, close your eyes. This is not a PG game illegal in 47 of the 50 states currently. G5. Yep. Yeah, that, this has been a ridiculous game. And Knight takes H1 on the board, so you're up a rook for black for just one pawn. I guess your king might not find shelter if you're white, but I don't know. I mean, sorry, if you're black, but I don't know if white's king is going to be particularly happy either. Queen sorry, I'm freaking out. Black is winning in the current position. We know that. But again, like this is so crazy dynamic and so full of something in the kitchen, right? You can smell, all right, what the mosquitoes are cooking here because this has to be prep. With G5 played, again, you would never tell your students to play chess this way, but sacrificing this pawn for a huge center has got to be preparation, everybody. Like I said, this is home This is home cooking for David Klein. He played. This is a Benoni gone wrong for White, Robert. Once E4 was on the board on move 11, you could just smell that White was in huge trouble. Yeah, because the knight on G3, I always say this. Once those knights get on B3, G3, B6, yep. or G6, terrible squares. It inv invites... Uh, the other side to start pushing their pawns and try to kick it out. And okay, in this case, Klein just knew what he was doing. And no, and someone asked, is G5 a mouse lift for G6? No. no. G5 is a move, Richard Report style, giving yep. up the pawn and getting very quick activity and counterplay for that pawn. So really nice. All right. Well, the Raptors took a one game lead into this round of play, but that might be vanishing very quickly. As we can see, Klein is completely winning his black. And in game of the week fashion, I mean, this is. I know we've been saying this. We've had a lot of weird blunder moments, but this if Black converts this one cleanly, this may have be, this may be the game of the week candidate from the Central Division we're looking for. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay, what are some of the other games going on, though, between the Mosquitoes and the Raptors? Um, if, uh, that... if you see one you like, let's, let's go to Stewie Griffin here. Jose That's Herrera, right. unfortunately, um, not in the best of shape. Again, the Mosquitoes looking to strike back. So that one game lead the Raptors took into this round is vanishing quickly between David Klein and Miguel Admiral getting uh, getting victories, assuming that Admiral takes care of business. Yeah, and it looks like he is. You know, rookie seven, the Kings have to go to the back rank, and then I just want to rook to A7 and just try yep. to go rook Stewie, at six. Stewie not there. happy there. Uh, Fidia Master Jose Herrera, again, if you go to twitch.tv slash Stewie Griffin, give him a follow. He's working hard. Very, very nice-looking stream there. Unfortunately, not a lot nice-looking position as he's getting it handed to him. But, okay, go ahead and give him a follow if you're into that kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> like, I can see the stream there. It looks good, but position is anything but. Yeah, Rook A7 now has a threat of Rook C8, followed by doubling up on the seventh rank, and it's over. Yep. So he has too much time. Wait, how does White have so much time on this clock? Yeah. A Admiral is either in all prep or just, you know, he's, you know, trancing a champion of the past here. This is like super grandmaster chess for white. He's just crushing Griffin here. A3 on move one? Yeah, what, what is wh What are what people is drinking today? I, I know they're not drinking from a sippy cup like me. Maybe they this, should be. This is full of vitamins, vitamin water. This is this is a healthy beverage. I just cannot believe what we've been seeing in this these matches. Like, he's spent no time in the clock. He's completely winning. And Look at this. Admiral is just going to Hamtown, loving himself a selfie on E6. Yeah. Ridiculous. Robert, you can't play chess this way. No, and I don't. I can't handle this. This yeah. is really hurting me. They're like You know, the instructive Robert Hess, that, that guy, is crying somewhere off camera. I don't even know what to say right now because uh, Admiral just just doing work here for the Mosquitoes. And, uh, wow. Okay, so if the Mosquitoes win this one, we already said there's a brilliancy happening on the board for Black and David Klein's game versus Forcein. Uh What are the other games going on? I think those, those may be the only two left here. 
We have uh, Ilias van der Linde, that is uh, Mad Dog 94 versus... Yeah, okay, uh, that's the... I was looking. We got a lot of games going. By the way, shout out to everybody if you're wondering how to follow the Pro Chess League. You can go to chess.com slash live and then just type in the command slash backslash follow and uh, hashtag PCL. So if you're into choosing your own adventure, just go to chess.com and do it yourself. Um, just want to say shout out to everybody in the Twitch chat. Urbinky, thank you for the subscription. I will try to promote the cup more as best I can. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Meyer's saying he just realized Robert was talking about his position. Uh, we did like your game this round, Georg. I'm not going to lie. We did like it. Yeah. Um, I like good chess positions, and I cannot lie. When you get the rooks going, I can't deny. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah, he yeah. just checked me at the guy. But stop tuning into our channel as well. Not everybody, just Georg Meyer. Just yeah. Georg. You go go play chess, Georg. You go you go do what you're supposed to do right now, young man. Okay. Yeah. Um A lot of games still going. I mean, we could we really could pick our flavor here, Robert. I mean, I'm looking at this one here, as we said, from Vanderland versus Alvarado Diaz. It's the other mosquitoes on Raptor battle. It's weird when you see a position with like a queen on g3, no king's castled, and this one is the boring one of the round. Yep. Right? <laughs> because of David Klein's game. Yeah, David Klein's game was awesome. Just totally Yeah, let's let's go dual boards on that. Let's bring David Klein's game back up on the main board and uh or or yeah, right here. This is good. I just I want to keep that on the board. This is this is I want to see the finish. The uh Vanderlen game there on the left, David Klein doing work as white. Uh sorry, as black. Well, so f6 is a threat. So either yep. knight g3, yeah, he played knight g3, good move. I was going to say rook h6, rook lift, a defensive rook lift in that case. Yeah, rook h6 would have been a clean defensive move, but knight g3 is an active defensive move because it threatens to take e4 with check. So, And the bishop on f1 with check, not that you will. Um, other moves on the board right now, possibly knight to c4 with check. Um how worried do I have to be about 96 check for white? I'm a little worried. So much so that I might even play rook h6 and just sacrifice the exchange if you put a pony there. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, rook, rook h6, 96 check. Maybe I even just go king g8 and just say, well, okay. Your knight oh, that's true, too. Just walk walk the dog into, uh, into his cage. Nothing wrong with that. And white's king is still in trouble. For those of you just joining, you missed our analysis of a total brilliancy earlier and. If you're not doing the math, black is up a rook in the current position. Just do, you know, hold out your hand, do that thing like when you're in kindergarten, count count the points, and 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 black's up five five points. Yep. So. Not good for force in here. Yeah. Okay. I like this, and you don't have to sack the exchange. I think your move king g8 is best, but um, you know force in is 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 struggling here. For sure. No, this is just already kind of hopeless, but you have to play on for your team, right? Because there are some tactics here that Black has to keep an eye out on, and all right, it's not going to happen, but there are some chances where Klein makes some crazy mm -hmm. mistake. We've seen many well, of those today. We'll come right back. This one just want to show that, indeed, Stewie Griffin did go down here, unfortunately, for the Raptors, so that's why you see the Mosquitoes having moved up in the scoreboard. Um, so we're we're back to the final two games still in progress right now between the Mosquitoes and the Raptors for this round of play. Um, you know, but I think I think the matchup I guess we kind of overlooked that's maybe actually closer to coming to a conclusion this round is the one between the Berlin Bears um, and the Norway Gnomes. So let's let's go to It's Felix right here, where uh, Blaberger is losing as white and down on time, I feel like this is a deja vu. Not not to try to pick on Blah Burger, but his chess has been Blah today. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just not going well for him. Knight C3. Robert's oh, laughing, and you're and you're giving me a bad look. Let's give a shout-out to Arn real quick. Studio C shot. <laughs> Studio C shot. Come on, where is that guy? Where's my, where's my friend? There he is. There he is. There's my producer doing it and doing it and doing it well. There he is yeah. with the can of beans. There we go. What kind of beans? Which, by the way, we've got the man Rick rolling me behind. Guess who just started his last game of play or is about to? That's JKD. You didn't know Jan Christmas Duda uh, was a, was an 80s pop star, but um, you're about to find that out when we throw a picture of him up here in a second. All I know is that he's no stranger to love. Oh, you dirty girl. 
<laughs> JKD. Well, what is I uh Blobberger tried something with Bishop of seven check and then resigned or lost in time. Nice. Not working out for him here. He took an F7 check. And, uh, yeah, Ringdahl it's over. Hansen went away. I think I picked Ringdahl Hanson on my fantasy team. Yeah. So let's go Torbjorn. Keep winning games. I think my fantasy team is doing pretty well. I'm not sure. But for everyone Ariantari, watching. for the record, already drew his game against Grandmaster Leon Mons. Leon. Um, Leon, if you're into that. If you're into correct pronunciations, it's Leon. Johan Solomon. Still playing well for the Gnomes. He's had a good year. Quietly a very good year for the Gnomes Solomon has had. Um, and uh, maybe actually about to get a, a point that helped them get back in it. Um, Are you saying he's a potential all-star? Oh, kind of like my boy Devin Booker. <laughs> oh, man. Do you talk basketball now? Apparently, Marcus Gasol just got traded to the Raptors, by the way. Really? Yeah, for Valanciunas. Oh my gosh, that is trade deadline talk later that we are going to have. Yeah, it is Thursday, and it's, oh gosh. I you and I look. are going to dim the lights after this, throw on some Lionel Richie, and talk NBA trade talk, my friend. Can't wait. But right now, I guess we're stuck with Johan Solomon's game. And yes, I don't really sir. feel stuck because, well, I like his position a lot. Don't... I, love, I love his position. And the Gnomes, excuse me, before I said the Gnomes are trying to get back into wait, it, the Gnomes wait, are he, actually. He blundered. Did he just blunder? Isn't Rook D8 just getting the queen off that? Game guy? over, Rober. No, oh, Rook. He, he missed Rook to D8. The point is, everyone, and this is such a good subconscious kind of you know thing to learn. Don't dismiss moves just because there's a take with check. It's actually losing if White goes for this because there's mate on G2 that White can't stop. So dual blunders back and forth. White blunders Bishop C5, but Grandmaster Braun doesn't take his opportunity. Wow, and actually, now that I'm looking at it a little more, after rook d8, if you're queen e4, queen takes f1 check. Right, your rook's on d8, threatening rook d1 checkmate. Marco so, Fultz was traded. Gre uh, Greg, were any trades involved in my, my sons? Thanks for the update, buddy. I'm going to watch that <laughs> Twitch chat. All right, well, yeah. Solomon's going to gonna win now, and he'll probably never know that he blundered with bishop c5 until, until he watches Hammer's stream later and we see Hammer frowning on camera. Sometimes Hammer gets a frown that needs to be turned upside down. It takes a teddy bear to make him happy. Well, maybe you should go send one express to Norway. Oh, no sun's action. Story of my life, Greg. Story of my life. All right, rook c8. The black is worse because of all the pawns. But how do you convert this? Back to some serious chess. Let's give the fans some educational stuff. Um, okay. Actually, it's not easy to convert this at all because now there's a four on three majority for white on the king side. But it's you're broken. To, you're losing your a pawn for sure. Yeah. So now rook takes a two. I think if rook takes a two, white will play rook d one. And and if they get doubled on the seventh rank, you can never move your rook back to f eight because of my bishop. But so, rook d okay, that's surprising. I, I think I think rook d one made the most sense in rook d seven. But all right, he plays rook f two. Well, very importantly is that Black's not in time to trade Rooks and play And now A5. he has A5. I, well, I really A5? don't like the way Solomon has tried to convert this. I mean, we were giving him props, but I feel th this is totally slipping for White. No, but A5 is meant by B5. Now that's why H5 was necessary, because you needed to have space for your uh -huh, king. Otherwise yeah. So we free the back rank, give the king a little bit of luft, a little bit of air. This actually looks ni like much nicer for Black now, because I don't know how you stop A5. Because if you move your bishop away from c5, my rook then goes to c1, my c rook that is, now a5. Yeah. Okay, it's still not that easy. So a5, rook a7, pawn takes b4, rook, trade rooks on a1, and play bishop takes b4. I do have this four on three that I can start mobilizing on the king side, and it's very nice that my pass pawn will be an e pawn, so I can really start pushing that through. But it does feel like black's chances have improved. And, well, okay, I don't know about that much. All right, we'll keep our eye on this and whether Solomon can can still convert on it. But the other game, Lagunov versus Stubik Holm, uh, that is the the last other remaining game here between the Bears and the Gnomes. Um, this one also really crazy. Yep. Let's 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 focus our attention here on the Gnomes and Bears and actually bring the other board back up to the. Uh, to the to the games that we really want to look at. 
I think I think the two games we want to focus on here as the Bears and Domes come to an end are this one here and the one we were just looking at between excuse me, between Solomon and Baby yeah. Legs. No, the the game but that home is black here just looks just completely winning for black because yeah. the king on F one first look at that knight in F four. Can we give show some appreciation and love to that knight there? Like Can I get a shout out for my knight on F four? It's ladies' night. I mean, it's just the best night ever. Yeah. You can't kick it out. There are no pawns to kick it with. The knight on E3 is totally overmatched. Just beautiful piece helping deliver checkmating ideas. Yeah, this is just a great position for black. In fact, maybe the simplest move, Robert, is something like rook B8. Just get another rook on the open file. Yeah, rook B8 looks really good. It's a king E1 Threaten, rook Threaten B8. things like rook B2 and should be, should be all over but the crying. And it's it just shows that you control both sides of the board here. Your move rook b8 controls the b file, which is the only open file on the queen side. The rook on h3, if you ever take me on h3, my queen gets in there, and now I'm controlling the king side open file. Yep. So, and by the Absolutely. way, MBL and Duda have just begun their fi their final round match. And that's definitely going to be the the matchup of the of the hour for us to focus our attention on for sure. But uh, all right, so let's let's keep let's keep some eyes on this game here. As Lagunov at home come to an end, but but bring one of our boards back to Leon Beast and Maxime Vache Lagrave throwing down two two twenty seven fifty players. Um, really, I mean the pressure is is on JKD, which is not the best place to be, Robert, when you're playing the black pieces versus Maxime Vache Lagrave. But if he doesn't get a win here, I think the Kane Blitzstream can pretty much kiss their chances goodbye. Yeah. No. Khan is down seven to five right now, so it's it's my... Kane Bloodstream. It's what? It's Kane. It's Kane? No, it's not. It's definitely it's... not Kane. Can we get a fact zero... check on that? Khan Kane? Just it's kidding. definitely I know it's Khan. I'm just having fun. All right. All right. I got so confused there. I'm like, you should be making like a Citizen Kane reference that I'm not getting right now. Okay, anyway. But you're right. Being on the black side of this position against Maxime Vachet Legrave is yep. not easy in any time control in any setting, but particularly when your team is down by two points in the final round of this matchup. Yeah, this is As we said, the Bears and Gnomes are are locked in a battle where really the Bears are the ones trying to fight back. Um Lagunov in a tough position to do so there on the left. But as we said, the last round of play between the migraines and the Blitzstream, if you're just joining us, is underway. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Because we've got JKD throwing down for the con, as our boy William Shadner is teaching us right now. There con blitzstream. Um, okay, Bishop of six. Okay, this is this is a theoretically pretty pretty kind of simple position, right? I mean, in some ways, what you've got here is just a just a Petrov where objectively JKD is is going to be fine here as black, but probably not one where. You can expect a lot of winning chances to happen. White has a comfortable bishop pair. Um, very easy to play position, whether that bishop finds itself on g2 or h3, Robert. And uh, it's just it's looking looking tough right here for young, for young Christoph. Yeah, for sure. The bishop on h3 is very well placed because the pawn e6 is a target. If you ever push that pawn to e5, then d5 becomes loose. And the bishop just wants to find an open diagonal. Yep. And so I like what what um dude is doing with rook d8 you have to do that but if i'm white do i just play f4 here and just continue trying to clamp on the position play f4 yeah that would maybe... be there and it he is. does it he hears you look at mvl taking one out of robert's book and, and i might sorry let ahead. me ask you this if e5 is okay e5 can't be played right away because there's the queen hanging on d7 yep. but if e5 is played at some point is white responding with f5 and trying to use a three on two majority or are you taking to open the position for the bishop here what would be your advice for for people watching um, yeah, that actually is a very interesting question. On one hand, I really want to play f5, g4, g5, which you were asking yeah. about. But on the other, I'm kind of concerned about giving black the uh, enormous pawn center. So I'd yep. probably play for f5, but I'm not convinced, at least not yet. But knight a5 well, is a good move because then that's getting yeah. right four. It threatens knight c4, and you have this outside potential that if, if MVL misplaces his pieces here, we've talked about how hard it should be for black to get a win against the Frenchman with three names. But if knight c4 comes in and the queen pops into b5, suddenly you're getting some counterplay against the king on c1. Um, so knight c4 definitely looks like the move here. Yeah, knight c4, queen b5. 
Is he just going to go B3 and say, I don't care about my A pawn? Your knight's trapped over there or something? B3 the, of knight A3, then there's there's, the, there's what? The E6 pawn is hanging. What? The E6 pawn will be hanging. At yes, least. and maybe that's it. Maybe he just trades and says, your knight on A3 has wandered too far. Yeah. It's interesting, and this is this is how these top grandmasters are approaching this position, not taking anything for granted. Probably, probably something similar to this would 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 have already been looked at in the kitchen by someone like MVL. He's probably very aware of the common tactics in this kind of Petrov middle game. Yeah, we saw MVL win that was it ninth round game in Gibraltar. Speaking of things cooked in the kitchen, yep. entirely preparation. Yeah, he just blitzed it out against Kirill Alexienko and won a very nice game. So, okay, it's, well, he's going to have to rely in part on his teammates as well because I think knight c4 for JKD looks like the obvious move and it, it challenges white. But he's got his teammates, um, Jules Moussard, playing Sebastian Mazé. That game does not look particularly interesting yet, but does look like something that I would see in a Hikaru Nakamura game because yep. it's from Alyokin, and this knight is coming from c8 over to f5. And I think wait, I saw wait, him Which game were you talking about? The game between Mazetovic and Anoel. Um, that's Sebastian Mazze with the white pieces. Against Finding it, there it is. Mazetovic and Anoel. Let's let's bring that up. Yeah, this is this is a Hikaru Nakamura special. And here comes that knight to f5, just directly mm -hmm. challenging white center. That's the big problem. Your d4 pawn is sort of a backwards pawn here. No, I don't have a rook or an open file to attack it, but I'm going to throw my third minor piece at it. Yep. And White is going to be a bit tied down. You know, so. I, I struggle with these positions as white a lot, and I don't know if it's okay for me to just lay down on your therapist chair and ask for help, but I'm going to do it. Robert, what does white need to do in this position here? Because you highlighted black's plan. It's very straightforward. The knight comes to f5. The d-pawn is weak. If b4 for white, black is going to play a6. I always feel like my queenside counterplay isn't fast enough here against this al Yohan idea, and help me. Help me, Robert. Well, honestly, I like these positions from Black's perspective, but I You're do not think... Helping. You're not helping. I'm about to help. Okay, I was <laughs> going to say G4 is an option. That's but, uh, actually that's actually instructive right there. Yep, G4. because the point... G5 wins the bishop. It, it just... You, your bishop has no squares. So Black sort of has to either play Knight C8 here, which looks awful because you're just retreating, but probably play G5. And after G5, the question well, now, is... Now you've given me squares like F5 and H5. Yeah, and can I play h4 for white there, saying, oh. well, if you take me, then I play g5 again. So this is a that's tactical a solution to this position. And I actually was going to get into the positional nuances, because I think that's more instructive, honestly, but g4 is a very good move by Mazze. Um, I love I, g4. Yeah, Denny's Boro is saying that's how you do it. You play like Al Johan on both sides of the board as white, and that's uh, that's what white's doing here with g4. It's a very nice move. In fact, that already just taught me something about these positions. As somebody who, like I said, I was sharing that I feel like I've struggled playing the white side of this a lot. I feel like I should be fine. I've got a big pawn center. I've got space. I want to push my B pawn and, and have a good time. But then it all comes crashing down, right? One yeah, bad no. decision that night. <laughs> no, you're totally right because here's G5 and I expect H4 to be played. If H but If H4 is played... I'm not going to offer a back massage yet, but you have been a predicting little bird today, and I'm proud of you. Well, I'm just going all in. It's not my yep. game. It's the last game of the year. There's no holding back. That's right. Right? Just just go for it. Even though it's not the last game of the year, just the last game of this match. But that was a movie reference. Never mind. I love um, it. Just get into the water. I want some more. Okay, so let's look at h4. If h4 knight g6, that might be the cure, right? Because now I'm I'm unleashing the queen behind the bishop battery, so I'm no longer worried about that. And if you just push h5, well, I might pop this pony into one of these dark squares and eventually try to take advantage of your king. Yeah, so but maybe gonna... that's why white didn't play h4 was because of knight g6. No, but I thought h4, knight g6, I take on g5 and then play f4 myself and just, like, throw my pawns forward. That, and... would, be, that would be an all-in approach there. I mean, the bishop goes back to f6, and your king is going to be wide open with all these pawns, right? Robert, did you forget that pawns can't go back? No, I remember that, but I just had no fear because if, if White loses the game, it's not my game, so I'm totally fine with it. <laughs> That's right. Well, um, <clears throat> it isn't your game. It's not anyone else's game, but a lot of people still tuning in to see it. Thank you to all 6,000 of you that are with us right now. Whether you're at twitch.tv slash chess, chess.com TV, or anywhere else in the world right now, you chose the right channel. 
I couldn't agree more. And All right. I, I think that Maze chose the wrong channel by throwing his knight over to h5 like this. Now you have weaknesses, so what was the point? Yeah, now f3 is under fire. Ooh. Like, what was the benefit of playing g4? You play g4 to stop the knight from coming to f5, but yeah. also to gain space in the king side. Now it looks like black is the one taking over on the side. I agree. And you can't even move the bishop from e3. Two reasons, everybody. Sorry, from from f2. If, if the bishop had gone to e3, we would have had this very nice tactic. Rook takes e3 and bishop takes d4, pin emote, and the lady falls. So now white instead has to, has to make a trade, but d4 is falling, and that's the biggest issue of losing that dark square bishop is that d4 pawn was protected by the priest on f2. No longer. No longer protected by the clergy. Bishop's gone. No, sir. And now, actually, knight takes d5. Do not be fooled. Don't take on d4 yet, because knight d5, queen d4, you trade on d4, and you lose the pawn c7, and then you lose one of your rooks. So after knight yep. takes d5, queen d8, the very safe response says, you move your knight, and then I take on d4. And then black is the one picking up momentum. And, and what's funny about this, Robert, is so white is the first one to strike and win a pawn, right? But now you look at, as we joked, pawns can't go back. You look at the pawns on F3 and G4. This, you know, the emperor has no clothes on G1. The D4 pawn will eventually fall, and probably, probably black is the one with the attack, right? If the knight moves, knight takes D4. There's rookie two in, in a lot of positions, and very dangerous for white here. Yeah, absolutely. In okay. fact, this, this is one of those positions that white can just be lost in the next three moves. But, so if white indeed loses, it'll just be yet another feather in the cap of the migraines. Um, and if we go back to the game with... Uh, what happened here? JKD Whoa. won a piece. Wait, what? A MVL. What? We said we said MVL uh, so hard to beat his white. But, you, we, you know, we left this game kind of calling for white's idea. I mean, I was saying, you know, hey... Very hard to beat Maxime Vacher Le Grave with black, but if you're going to do it, you might as well go for a, for an attack on the king. Look what happened here, Robert. Knight c4, queen b5. This is exactly the line we looked at. But after bishop takes, g takes, bishop e6, queen a5, what did MVL miss? He played king b2, but then rook d6 came. Oh, it's a fork. Rook d6 maybe threatens knight c4 check and then rook b6? Absolutely does, yep. Whoa. Is, would it be fair to say that JKD is Rick rolling on the queen side? <laughs> I love it. No, I mean, he's playing a great game. This is for sure going to be game of the week, right? When you beat Maxime Vachel with the black pieces, and, well, this is... What? Okay, I mean, uh, Moussard maybe gets a win here for the migraines, and, and that helps them, but... Oh, this is a sick tactic here. Rook d1. If you go rook a4, I, just take, I can go knight c4 check first. Because oh, you're nice C4, hit. and if Rook takes Queen A1, backdoor entry, mate yep. town. Yep. And actually, there's like, so Rook D1, Rook A4, Knight C4 check. Um, then if I take with the pawn on C4, then I can take on this Rook on A4 or throw Queen to B6 check first and go for a checkmate that way. So it's just all hope is lost after this move, Rook to D1. Shocking. So again, uh, we left we left this one thinking that this was the potential, but I, you know, I'm still very shocked that this got so far away from MVL. He should have been okay with Robert's idea that taking e6 was all right, but I think king b2 was really the big mistake, Robert. I think, or at least the start of the problem where he just underestimated JKD's idea of rook d6 and rook b6. I think, I think if he plays bishop f5 or does something else to kind of sit on the position, maybe he's still okay. Yeah. Yeah, he would have had to yeah, open up the E file, offer a trade, and said he went for this bishop takes D5. Look at how Jan Kristoff's going to finish this off. Knight takes C2. Nice. So where, where's the knockout? Queen takes B3 or... Wait, what? Got to take B3 and then... Okay, I right. mean, at queen this point, he could trade into the rook ending. Yeah, queen A3 check wins on the spot. Ah, uh, yeah, you're losing the queen. If queen b2, there was rook d1, everybody. And here, and rook if king d6. to b1, now we have c4? No, rook d6, yeah. Okay, fine. Be precise, Mr. No, precise. No, because c4, let rook take c4 happen. And then I know. Five. That's why I said, okay, be precise, Mr. Perfection. Oh, I'm not Mr. Perfection. I'm just correct. I'm sorry. You're driving me right now. You're driving me crazy, Robert. You do this every time. Well, do you want me to call an ambulance for you? I want you, to have your, gonna... I want you to understand my feelings. There's going to be an ambulance coming by in like probably two minutes. So what a win for what a win for. Can we just take a second to appreciate Jan Christoph Duda 
frankly crushing Maxime Vajay Lagrov with the black pieces here. A game that got away from JKD and Jan Christoph Duda strikes again. Um, Rick rolling his way to victory. Huge, huge there. That's why the Blitzstream went and got themselves a free agent from Poland this year, Robert. That's why they went and got that guy. Yeah, it's too bad the Warsaw fighters didn't qualify in the qualifier, right? They didn't make it through. Yep. But JKD, players were smart. Not players, teams were smart to go after him. And, well, the Khan Blitzstreams are the recipients of one of the best players in the world. All right, well, we've got we've got Meyer taking on um, Mate Sebenik, right? Raphael, if you follow chess.com usernames. Yep. Um, the uh, Ljubljana Turtles all have names after the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? That's their thing. It's a cute. It's adorable. Did, um, did Meyer play like a Sicilian? How did we get? Oh, no, it was D4. What? This looks like a Sicilian, and I was shocked because Meyer playing a Sicilian is yeah, unheard uh, of. To the Bat Cave. Let's do it. Yeah, just I, I would have been shocked if Meyer did not play French because he always plays the French. He always gets me a Can little aggravated and agitated and all sorts of aided. And now he didn't play it, so I'm okay. Sorry. Somebody's playing a flute out a the flute. door here in our office. So, so I was playing a flute? I wish I could hear it. That would be music to my ears, literally. No, it's not mine. Of course not. We got to tell flute. him, like, he, he, the... he needs to put that on silent on show days. I don't know. Is that having, like, a side conversation Sorry. where I'm, like, somewhat a part of it? <laughs> All right. Here we go. I don't know where we are. I'm just my... I'm going over this game between Sevenick and Meyer um, just to see where we got to get to the live position because Sevenick has held his own. I mean, you said it looked like Meyer played a Sicilian, but Sevenick has really just, I think, been a little bit better from start to finish in this you know, London, London Tory, whatever system you want to call it. Well, I'm wondering as we get to the live position, you know, if queen takes d5, does white have more than queen c8 check and queen back to f5 with check and some sort of repetition? Well, there's, I mean, does black have more? Black can play king h8 and meet queen c8 with queen g8. Right, but I'll go queen f8 check so that if you go queen g8. Uh, and then you pick up the d6 pawn. So Meyer playing for more. Georg is not afraid to... Take a chance here. So King H somewhere. I know that was helpful, right? King H somewhere. Okay, H2. King H2, Queen F2. So he's... Interesting way to bring the Queen to the King side. And the point, everybody, is is Queen to C8, King H7. And there's no checks on F5 because that Queen guards it. So makes it very hard for White under time pressure right now to come up with the right approach. You're worried about rook a2 on the board for Meyer. Um, There's no threat of queen takes e1, though, because queen c8 check will be a, a draw by perpetual. Yeah, it does. You're right. It doesn't threaten queen takes e1, but it does threaten rook a2. Yeah, rook a2 is definitely a useful looking move. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even play rook a8 and try to swing the rook over to f8 or rook a7 to f7, but... That's interesting. Yeah. But Meyer definitely going for more, I think, mainly because of the practical thing we've pointed out, which he's up two minutes on the clock. And uh, that's that's your chance to to push. Well, he went for rookie three because he said, please take me so I can make a draw. Right? We're yep. talking about this queen C8. Again, perpetual on the light squares. Killed the cat. Don't let yep. it happen. Yeah, this just looks very level. Hey, I see Anna in the chat. Anna, a long time no talk. Really just a couple hours ago. We're Anna Rudolph, me. what's up? Um, all right, well, let's keep an eye on this one here between okay. Mate Sevenik and Georg Meyer, and then bring up on our second board the other big game between the Snowballs and the Turtles, Kolars versus Skuala. The uh, Snowballs are in the lead right now, obviously over the Turtles, and, you know, it's kind of big, almost double the score. And it looks like Kolars is, is only going to help that. This looks super dangerous for Skuala right now. I mean, both sides under two minutes, but I look at Black's King being in such danger on G8, and you have to like White's chances. Queen takes H6 is coming. Yeah, and Black is up a pawn here, but that's not nearly as important as the King's safety. That pawn on G6 is a beautiful piece. Just limiting the King's options, the no mobility there, that the, once Queen takes H6 happens, which it should happen right now, I guess Black will try Rook G7, but then I play knight f4. And even if you end up going up a pawn as black, your king is going to be very vulnerable. Yep. So queen h6, rook g7. I, I think knight f4 looks good. 
You take well, me. I was gonna say Bishop G7 is made on H7, right? I think Rook G7. Oh, you said Rook G7. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I was just kidding. Well, that is important to show, right? That you need to keep that Rook on the seventh rank, otherwise, um, the H7 squares you're getting made. Okay, right. Meyer did eventually just take on E3. Looks like he's settling on the perpetual. Unless he sees something dirty about king f7. No, because just queen e6. Okay, exactly. so it's a draw. Yep. Um, I wonder if he blundered that, because now he's taking his time, or is he just trying to keep the turtles kind of confused? Sometimes a team strategy, Robert, that maybe is uh, forgotten, but the longer your game is going, I think the more you actually cause a little bit for the other team to think about. There's always that weird outside possibility of a crazy result, so... Sometimes I think they take time on the clock just to make things a little confusing. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it puts more pressure on the teammates. Once a draw is secured, you know, you feel a little bit of sense of relief. But, yep. okay, that position is, of course, nothing but And indeed, the draw. the draw is in the books. Um, Kolar's and Skuola, now the only game going still in this, in this round of play between the Snowballs and the Turtles. We still like Kolar's position just because that Black King is dangerous. What about Rook D4 here? Give me, yeah. give me the H file, or give me death. Why Queen A six? He just wanted Rook involved, yo. I agree with you. I would have just take gone Rook D four to go Rook H four with checkmate. Yeah, but instead D four was the move for sure. But still, so nice for White here, right? You're playing such a riskless position. On the other yeah. hand, the King on H seven is vulnerable. Then the D six and F five pawns are split. So at any moment, Rook takes F five uh, will be an option for White. This is looking very, very difficult for Uranus. For those of you that may just be joining us by some random chance, unfortunately you've missed one of the most uh, just crazy days we've had, I think, in the 2019 season of the Pro Chess League. But we we talked about young Christoph Duda getting a big win for the Blitzstream, which brought that score 7-6 to six over Maxime bache Legrove. And maybe we should go back to that match here because it's really the one that's closest to finishing. And if... If the if the the Kane blockbusters were gonna come back, con, if they were gonna come back, JKD had to win, and and they might they might do it. I'm looking at some of these games, and it's not so clear for the for the Blitzstream and the migraines. You're absolutely right. I mean, pa Pavel Trigubov is on the migraines. He's the white piece against Maxime Lagarde. That's yep. uh, Ricky Kitts versus Trigubov. But isn't Lagarde up a pawn, and there's no real attack for White? Yeah, I mean, Lagarde is, Lagarde's in grape shape. If he beats Tregubov, that would bring us to a 7-7 tie, again, courtesy of JKD's big win over MVL that you all just missed, so don't go anywhere. Um, okay, the other game is Mazatovich versus Onawal. That's Jules Moussard versus Sebastian Mazze. Okay, here, Moussard was much better earlier, and now, now this thing is turning around. Mazze... Mazze up the exchange is white, and unless his king gets mated, he'll just be better in the endgame with the two rooks. Mazze trying to be the hero that they need. Yeah, what what it looked good for black a little while ago, and then he went rook e4. Yeah, if we back up and show you where we were, uh, a little bit ago, we were loving this position for black. The knight came into h4. Felt very awkward that white had to part ways with the dark square bishop and the king was becoming open. But Mazze playing like he doesn't care about king safety. Oh, you know what it was? Moussard played rookie four, sacrificing the exchange. One can only wonder why. I have no idea why. Like, what in the world was needed to sacrifice the exchange here? I guess he thought that he was overpowering with this rook takes d4 idea, but it looks super bizarre. Well, especially just because you own the open file, right, Robert? The king is potentially in danger if and when you ever infiltrate on the eve squares. It feels like it was just impatient, right? Like, rookie four was not needed. And I know, and I'm the guy that loves exchange sacks. But this was definitely not the right moment for it. You're right. No, impatient is exactly how I would describe it. Instead yeah. of trying to milk the position, you know, use your advantages, you said, let me be more uh, direct. Make just a, a quick shot here, and, well, it's backfiring because... White's king is not actually in that much danger. The h3 pawn is hanging, yep. and there's always going to be opportunities for White to try to trade queens on that long diagonal. No, this yep. is... Yeah. Well, that's that's unfortunate for the migraines because Moussard looked like he was going to be a, like the insurance policy for MVL if somehow he lost to Jan Christoph Duda. But right now, Jan Christoph Duda wins. If Moussard falls, Tregubov is losing... I, I think he's just completely losing to Lagarde here. I mean... 
he's in the all in mode right now. Like he's got he's got a million knights hanging, right? Mm -hmm. And uh and the queen's under fire, so No, he's definitely losing. And actually I just took a peek at the board four game because well, it looks like uh Khan is doing well on two of these boards that are left and on board four, only Khan can be better here. Yeah. And again, Khan is, of course, the uh, the Khan Blitzstream. As you can see, that's Augustine Droin playing against Morizi, who's been great today, by the way. Morizi drew Jan Christoph Duda in the first round, scathing the board one for the Blitzstream, um, and then also got a big upset uh, against Grandmaster Sebastian Mazze, right? Um, yep. But but not, uh, not here. Now he's going to lose to his fellow board four. At least only White can win. Yeah, I think he'll be able to hold this. Well, hopefully, but... I don't like his clock situation. I don't like his position either. So it's no. This be... is this is a huge turnaround. I, I felt. I mean, you're up two games going the last round. MVL with the white pieces. He's surely not going to lose to Jan Christoph Duda. Well, uh, this this could be a huge turnaround for the Blitzstream. For sure, though, this is already very problematic for for all of these uh, migrants here. It's... Hey, guess who's got a headache now? Me, because I've been commentating for eight hours that's true you want to go get some water buddy i have water right next to me don't worry i was talking about the migraines but uh, yeah but i actually don't have a headache i'm just i know you're just being adorable you're just you're, i wanted your dad reflexes to come out here you know just be like oh son are you okay i'm like well i'm not your son but yeah i feel all right thank you hey hello hey. Hi. it's okay robert i feel okay i promise who doesn't feel okay which matchup wait what did uh, Maurizio just do here? He lost the pawn, and he's going after the pawn. Yeah, I mean, okay, Mazze is up the exchange, having to debate about whether his winning chances are increased by trading queens or taking h3. I actually think on that left board there, Mazze could take h3 or, or trade on d4. But the board here to the right, again, remains one that only... The Blitzstream can win. And I think there are decent chances. Like, the question is, can you rush the king up and create opportunities against the black king? Right. Um, oh, that's, a good, that's a good question. If the king can rush up there, then you're going to hop into f5. Yep. It's going to be difficult. But look at this pawn in c4. So go king d4 here, because then you're going to try to go c5, try to go c6. I guess king d4, h4. Just use that pawn as a distraction. That's yeah, king d4, h4. Try to run up the board as fast as you can. So maybe maybe white has to be careful not to risk it. But the five-minute time advantage to go with the, the the better position is another thing in the favor of the Blitzstream. For um, sure. 38 seconds of counting down. Not a good look for Maurizio here. King d3... Knight g4 makes sense. That actually helps with the f pawn's goals of getting to f6, right? Now you can play f5, which threatens both f5. rook g6 check and f6. f5 looks real good here. Perfect. Yeah, Droin is doing work here. Uh, rook okay, I think rook g6 is, is close to lights out. If the king touches the h file, Harry falls. And if you move over, okay, now there's both knight e5. Yeah, and rook h6 also. And rook h6 to consider it. I think White I think, should. Okay, he plays quickly. I think maybe that was that maybe starts to become a slight mismanagement by the the young Augustine here because I think I think that's an opportunity to take your time. You've got five minutes. Oh, okay. Knight six check. Yeah, that's huge. Okay, so he gets he gets away with it. But even this, Robert, like just really improving White's winning chances as clearly as they may have been. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now now you just take the. Bishop. Okay. Now you just take <laughs> King D four. Okay, like, it doesn't okay. really matter, but that you definitely should have taken the bishop there. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah, all right. Good enough for white, and still the fact that white has 18 seconds, despite my criticism of white slightly mismanaging his time. So um, we can still see over there on, on the left that uh, Mazze is, is better as white. He did indeed choose to take h3 and let the queen stay on the board, which I agree with. I think that... Um, Getting rid of that h3 pawn makes that king on h1 really safe for the rest of the game. So the the migraines are are frankly giving themselves headaches at this point in the match because they are they're kind of giving away this match at this point, losing losing games that they shouldn't. Knight to c7 is lights out there for white. Yep, 
Droin does it, the game's over. Let's move this second board over to the other one that will wow. that will also be super tough for Treggy Buff to hold. Two yeah. knights and Eddie the Eagle on E4. And that pawn is just pushing easily. You can't even stop it, right? E3, E2. It's getting at least that far. This looks really tragic. Super tough day right now for the migrants who just seem to be cruising to victory, led by Maxime Vacher Le Grave, but again he fell. And uh, the Kane, sorry, the Khan blockbusters look like they're about to come back big time. Yeah, knight e3 check to put the knight on g2 and then play e3, e2, e1. Can't stop it. Knight on g2, e3, e2, e1. Music to my ears. Robert Hess speaking sweet nothings. And uh, I thought I was speaking sweet everythings right there. Whispering sweet, sweet everythings. Oh. Because it's an e pawn? I don't get it. Hey, look at uh, Excella Bagus. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's, it's fish. Love it. They're using the goatee fish. Weird English language stuff. All oh right, well, God. okay, let's give Musard credit because what's happened over here, um, okay, this this one's over, and, and indeed Lagarde actually um, will we'll give uh, the Khan Blitzstream a lead, but if Musard makes a comeback... If we go back to kind of analyzing this one, this is a this has become very weird. Suddenly, the queen and knight can maybe work together against something, uh, against the white king here. This is this is not so clear anymore. Yeah, no. I mean, look at the time pressure. White's under forty seconds. Black can play c six to support the knight, and Musard might end up being the hero the migraines deserve, not the one they needed. Wait, no, the one they need. And the one they deserve, or do you? No, it's the one they deserve, not the one they needed. Wait, but all Maze needs is a draw, and they, then the blue teams win the match. Yeah, they'll win eight and a half, seven and a half if Maze wins. The the what? block, uh, sorry, no. the blitz stream are on their way. Yeah, they just need uh, the draw here. Yeah. So how do you? What's the easiest way to make a draw? I'm trying to figure that out. Like, can I get some sort of perpetual check? Or... Yeah, you almost want to just allow a perpetual. Yes, you do for sure. But now if you go king g2, there's knight e3, so he's going to repeat. Good decision by Musard to play on. Yep. Play f5. Yep, that's really good play by... He's doing everything he can to keep the queens on the board. I mean, this is the this is the match on the line. Musard now has to win to tie it for the migraines. Never thought I'd say that. Oh, by the way, queen takes e 5 was a trick, everybody. If queen takes f5 was played, there was queen takes g1 with check, yep. followed, by, followed by winning the queen. So... Musard has Musard has worked it, worked it all the way back into a to a weird game. Yeah, that's what he really needs. If that knight can jump for, to g4 like in one mm -hmm. move, all of a sudden black is the one who's initiating the attack. And I like yep. his h4 idea by uh, Sebastian Maza. He can't just sit and do nothing because he's not making any progress. Instead, by yep. playing h4, at some point you can play h5, and then you're getting um, some just breaking black's kind of fortress on that side of the board. Yeah, I think this is the, the the best way to go. And there were some mistakes, of course, but now I think that say you know King F seven, maybe you just play H five and yep, try to chip away at the Black King. Just do everything you can to open up. And again, this is the difference between a team a team event versus an individual chess game, right? I mean, these guys are playing to clinch victory uh, for everybody on the blitz stream right now. If you're talking about Maze. Um, and Musard is also equally just, you know, getting a draw here as black against a fellow Grandmaster wouldn't be the end of the world, but it is here because that means the migraines lose. Um, okay, so but uh, Queen D2, the king moves, and then what's is he going to go all in for F4? Whoa, Knight D5 now? Knight D5 threatens Knight F4. Maze is really getting himself in trouble with only and 10 you know, seconds here. Oh, okay, so... Okay, and is white should still be fine, but this is just no time on the clock. Place, yeah, I was going to play C5. F4 it might be better, but I thought C5 and just start pushing the C pump. Wait, he take the queen. He and play 93 check. Oh, my God, he just no. blundered to a fork and loses the match. How has this happened so many times today? Oh, my God. How has this happened so many times? Wow. Oh, Danny. Oh my God! Well, Musar just prevented Maxime Vache Le Grave from going William Shatner and yelling, "God!" Right? I mean, MBL <laughs> doesn't have to do his best William Shatner impersonation because Musard staves staves off. Uh, he, he grabbed a victory from the jaws of defeat. 
Oh my gosh. Something it was a about wild match. What? Something about this um, central division has been all sorts of weird. Like the amount of blunders. This match in particular, Drone yep. missed checkmate in two. Yep. Tregubov has been winning and losing every single game. And I don't even remember his final result. He got two out of four. Yep. But he just like was the most back and forth games ever. And then this game to conclude the match. Eight eight feels well, reasonable. Maybe <laughs> Maybe it's poetic justice in the sense that uh, it seems like the blunders were equal on on all sides. But all right, the, uh, the let's move on to the top board between the gnomes and the bears. That's Aryan Tari taking on Baby Legs, one of the best usernames we haven't given much attention to, by the way. Um, yep. Aryan Tari is uh, taking on Arik Braun. Yep. And should be better as black. But. Uh, but this is also another weird one, right? This knight's going to put it on f4, and you've got this, you know, complete domination of the dark squares by white, and this bishop on b7, who's who's not everyone's favorite piece. Um, yeah, I, I guess the question is, what happens if white does nothing? So, like, okay, c, c4 is hanging, so you probably should have bishop d5 to defend that. And then but, knight f4? Well, you're rook on a7 to take care of that first, right? So ah. bishop d5, rook, let's say rook takes f7, bishop f7. How is black going to make progress there? Yeah, so the, what you're saying is black has, I guess, in theory, got to pass C pawn, but what what are you doing with it? Well, actually, the bishop on a seven will be perfectly placed because it defends it. Rook can come to a eight. Maybe this is the right way to yeah. go, but I'm still not convinced. If you play, well, knight of four is met by g five, so that just seems like a waste of. Money. Well, I think I think one of the issues here is not even is not even that uh, the knight of four is met by g five, but as you said, rook a eight. Also, black does have one plan to improve, which is the queen to move to this a three f eight diagonal, either d six or e seven, and then come into b four. Like like here, black could maybe play queen e seven, guard e four, keep an eye out on the b four square where you would go hit the b five pawn and. I, th I think it's harder to be Braun here than it is Tari. Yeah, that makes sense. Although, is Queen takes E4? Yeah, it is a threat. I was like, because I have Queen takes F2 check. Yeah, that would have been... That would have been silly. Wait, no. If you take on E4, I will... So if I go G5 here... Okay, I, I got it. So Queen takes E4 would be possible because whenever Discovery happens, you have Queen to F4. But if I start with Pawn G5... Yep, I'm already showing on the board. We're like... You and I are like simpatico right now. Yeah, so g5 stops queen takes e4 because queen takes f2 check, king takes f2, and then bishop... d5. Yeah, bishop d5, bishop g6. I don't know which square, but one of those squares. I, I don't even know if that's the right line necessarily because in the end, white does take on f4 with the knight. and Oh, instead of taking f2, play bishop g6 right away. Just go for checkmate. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, that, I agree. That would work. I agree with you. Then I thought about it and I was like, oh, Danny, you're totally correct. The, the queen trade actually doesn't help black. But the mating attack, that looks pretty good. No, but it, the point is that uh, Tari is sort of choosing here, right? I mean, he can play bishop d5. He can play g5. I think white has more to worry about on the f file than... Um, yeah, okay, he goes for this move g5. And again, queen takes e4 will be met by Roberts, bishop to, bishop to g6. Um... So where does this knight belong? On c3, maybe? Well, I mean, if you give me what I want, I want it on e5. Yeah, that would be the real dream. Yeah. But so, that's not happening. Well, I don't. I can't take on e4. I can keep shuffling my pieces, but like, let's say I go queen d2, knight e1, knight c2, knight b4, and then go to c6, something like that. Yeah, okay. Not very realistic, but something like that. He goes for like. the a file instead, which also makes sense, but... Now that black has played g5, which really played with the purpose of holding the f4 square, is it also possibly threatening h4? Yeah, although if h4 and I go g takes h4, gh4, then I have the f4 square for the rest of the game. That's the real ah, thing. Okay. But it would be nice to launch an attack like that, that's for sure. Okay, bishop d5. The knight is just such a bad piece here. Mm-hmm. He's just ignoring it. He doesn't care. Okay, seven, but but I think Tari can just play rook f7 even. Yeah, trading the rooks would be a good thing because then you get the queen behind the c pawn. Yep. Bring the queen over and the c pawn will run. Okay. I like, I mean, this was an idea I talked about earlier. The queen flipping around to this b4 square has dual purposes, hitting b5, but also opens up ideas 
of coming in toward the king. So queen b2 is played to stop queen b4. Right. Um, and now again, Tari, Tari can choose. So the gnomes are, are really one game away from clinching this match. So for those wondering why we're really focused on this, they took an 8-4 to four lead into this last round of play. And if Tari converts this one, um, he'll make up for his uh, horrible, horrible game earlier in the day where he blundered away, uh, completely winning. Or, okay, he, he blundered into mate, right? right? Was he winning or not? He should have won because of the clock, but he blundered into mate. Right. Yeah, no, that was really bad, and they just need a draw. But the mosquitoes and the raptors are tied six and a half, six and a half. Yep, so that's that... that's really going to be the matchup we focus on here. Uh, we've got, and I think Norway just got their draw. Johan Solomon's game just finished, so it looks like Johan already... Solomon gets a draw, which means officially the Norway match is over. Showing that, and uh, we had a, a a game in the books actually. Forsen won very quickly over Jordan Van Forest to the Mosquitoes. So Daniel Forsen is the reason why the Raptors tied it so quickly. Now it's six and a half apiece. Let's go look at David Klein's game versus Carl's DC 96. This has been, he's been one of the, the big performers today for the Mosquitoes, having just won a really, really good game in his last, uh, last match with black. Yeah. And here, and he's... here he's doing well as white as well. David Klein is just cruising, right? Yeah. Um, so wait, what's the material count? White's up a pawn. And black is trying to play B5 and get counterplay over there on the queen side, right? That's the key. Yep. And so how do you deal with that? Because I well, guess... I, if I wonder play... if you really even need to. I mean, you have the idea of the A file falling under your grasp the moment black plays B5. I mean, That's okay, true. so if you want, you could play rook a1 and really just say you're not going to play b5 without opening up my rook into the 7th rank. Right. So rook a1 makes sense, and then you can even play g4 next move, and g5, and king g4. So Danny, I think I think Klein is... I actually loved your rook a1 move. Yeah, I think I rook just... a1 might have been better, and then g4 and g5. So, all right. It's but profitable. I do believe Klein is, is kind of shopping at Baskin-Robbins right now. A lot of flavors to choose from here to win this one is white. Yep. And what do you think? He's going to take it with a C pawn or with the A pawn? Because you could take C, B5, A, B5 and play for A5. Or you can just go A, B5, A, B5, and then, I don't know, try to shore up your position with D3. I mean, you you can play A, B5, A, B5, and then even D3. Because if you trade on C4 and play Rook B3, White always has Rook F3 to guard it. I still yep. don't like this approach from Klein. I think the Rook A1 was better. But, but you know, like we said, I think White is, you know, this Knight is dominant. You've got the nice rook. You've got the extra pawn, right? Um, yeah. Should be okay for Klein. So the other interesting one here, well, let's keep this one on the board and pull up a second one to make sure that we follow Stewie Griffin and his uh, and his quest to help the Raptors. Shout out to uh, Baggles1991. Appreciate your Twitch Prime subscription. Everyone who's here, if you got a Twitch Prime sub, throw it our way. You love chess. We love chess. We all love chess. Let's get together. And be all right. Every little yeah. thing. Oh, okay, so that was his idea. He's got 97, which is sort of a fork emote, right? You've got the pawn on f7 hanging and the potential threat of knight c6. Um, so is he going to put knight c6 and take on e5? Like your I, th I like that because at the end of this, the king can just run from h3 to f5. And Stewie Griffin just won that game, by the way. Okay, well... We checked on, on Stewie Griffin quickly, and he, in fact, gets a big win right there. We caught the final moments of uh, the Twitch streamer known as Stewie Griffin, Jose Herrera, getting a victory for the Raptors. So uh, sticking on this matchup here, trying to find the other game that is still going. No, I'm yeah, still looking. Yeah, we have uh, Just Mig against... There it is. Uh, got it. Just Mig, which well, is uh, Miguel Admiral versus... Perancio, which is uh, Alejandro Alvarado Diaz. This this is a wild one. Yeah, what, this one what's is, going on here? So black is down in exchange, and one, two, six pawns on six. So just an exchange, but that. King, but why is why is e two not just falling? It is, and isn't the queen almost trapped? I mean, a five is a pawn white can take, but I mean, okay. No, but then a two is hanging right. Yeah, there's queen takes c7, too. Oh, I forgot about that. Ooh. 
I mean, I don't even know what's going on. You might be right. Maybe this is good if queen takes c7. Oh, you're just going to mate me on the second rank? Just like king Yeah, I mean, something king. like... Well, I don't know exactly how to do it, but I just want to bring the queen in and just, you know, deliver the goods. Um, okay, we can see that, again, the game between Klein and uh, Kamaryanga is... Uh, Still good for white. I don't really think the way that Klein has approached this is the best technique. And in that live position there on the left, everybody, if white ever plays g4, there's rook h2 mate. Oh, the g-pawn moved, and I thought he was playing g4 as I was talking about it. Story of our life today, but he didn't. That would have um, been ridiculous. Play g3, very smart. Now he can play king g4 and get the king out of the mating net. Yep. yep. But uh, Kamayanga is in trouble. Ad Admiral is uh, is also doing well as the Mosquitoes, so this, this looks like it's their match to get, despite the Raptors having a one-point lead there, 7.5, Um We've, uh... It looks like both Mosquitoes should get these final two games. Yeah, if Admiral plays Rook takes 2 as we've been talking about, and if Klein is able to just bring his king in, which it looks like he's trying to do, then the game should be Pretty much one for him. Should be, yeah. So let's look at this line of rook takes e2, queen takes e5, just to find the mate. Where is it at? Okay. Oh, we're, get, we're getting moves in the real game, so let's see. Oh, he didn't do it. He played knight b3 to take a3 with check and then bishop b4. Also also makes sense. I guess he'll take e2. Uh, you know, the pawn's not going anywhere, so my uh, guess kinda... is queen b2 will be met by bishop c3 with tempo and then take e2. I kind of love it. Yeah, this you know, the one thing about this, not to say the line we were saying was bad for black, but I think that uh, Admiral's approach here really limits any chances for white, right? Yeah, there's no slip-ups possible, right? You yeah, play, no, no slips. Where's this queen going? I don't. Why do you ask me questions like that? I just, because I don't know, and I just got queen b2, like you said, bishop c3, queen a3, and then just a rook takes e2, or queen takes e2. Yeah, it's and... just over. I mean, you could play... You could even play queen e2 and hope to sack your queen for a rooks on e1 just just to just to get cute. Yeah, this is very problematic here. Yeah, this this looks like uh, again looks like a, a victory for Admiral. It would take uh, take something really special for Klein not to win that game over there as White against Kamayanga, who's been very good for the Raptors this year. Not his best day today. Right. Wait, what's going on here? So he puts knight to g6. Okay. I'm wondering how he's going to win this. Put his knight in f5. Okay, that looks really smart. Or he can run his king to e6 first. But you put the knight in f5, that protects g3. So you go rook f2, rook, or rook f1. So play rook f1 now, then knight f5 check, then rook a1. Yeah. Go from He's there. taking way too long. He just needs to swing that rook to the a file. We called for it moves ago, right? Okay. Yeah, this is also good. I, I guess this also works. Going to bring the king in. Now h6, I assume. Can you H do it? Yep. If h6, bishop g3, you can take with the rook, and then you have rook g7 at the end of the line. So it should be winning for white just to play h6 there. Yep, definitely. Okay, look at uh, Diaz playing h3, trying to go for an inner mizzo. But, I mean, if black wants, he can just play queen h5 <laughs> or queen g2. Uh, white, has, white has done nothing to change the inevitable. Rook takes right. e2 is a problem. Yeah, this looks I mean, what do you bad. want here? You want you want bishop to 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 c3, and then I guess he'll play something weird like rook g1, but it doesn't matter. You can just take the rook on g1. Let's take the what well, you can. I mean, you can take g1 and then take b2 and take e2, but you might want something better. Because that would be a yeah. You're probably right. Play queen somewhere else. A queen. Right. I mean, I think if you if you can, you'd like to keep the queens on the board if you. If you take here, everyone, in the end, what we've got is this rook ending where, indeed, black is... Okay, black, black, black may actually just be winning very quickly. You might be right, Robert. Maybe the f-pawn is just super strong. Oh, he's yeah. going for it. So, yeah. uh... So I guess you, you were right in the end. Robert strikes again. But in the <sighs> end, it didn't even matter. What? In the end, it doesn't even matter. You know what? Yeah, I did. You're welcome. It You're happened. welcome, nerds. That's right. Before you know I'm be talking about Gandalf, you know, throwing down against Dumbledore. And I'm well, mixing L-O-T-R and HP. 
everyone to see that hashtag crap. FTW. That's right. For the win. Um, dun, 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 all right. Dun. Well, Black should win this again. Mosquitoes look like they're about to leapfrog the Raptors, which is just weird if you think about evolution and you know Jurassic Park and all this stuff. Uh, but anyway, mosquitoes, mosquitoes on path to take down the Raptors here. Kamiyanga just frozen after H6. Yeah, he so he would put his king back on G4. I yeah, still yeah, not. I, I, I wonder if Klein's just you know playing tickle to make sure that you know he gets his team in the best chance before they win. But he, he's it, this has been moments away from converting for a very long time, and and uh, White has not won that game on the left. He's um, scared to give up his D3 pawn, and he should have just run Rook F. Still, like, Rook F1 to A A1. Okay, now your G3 pawn's hanging. But So it's play black, G4. Black coming in with the king to F3. This this should be over. Ooh, uh, okay, it doesn't matter. All right. But for those of you thinking, Danny, I thought this was a family-friendly show. Why would you drop an FTW? Remember, FTW stands for For the Wizards or For the Wizarding World if you're into FTWW. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'll scream FTW at the top of my lungs. For the Wizarding World. Um... G5. Here it comes. Here it comes. G pawn coming. Mosquitoes get their first win. They should be about to leapfrog the Raptors. As we said, the Gnomes have already clinched their match. And the Turtles, unfortunately, were down four games headed into this final final uh, set. So uh, look at this nice way to finish. He finally does it with King G6. Let's bring up the analysis board and show exactly how Klein is going to finally put this one away. Took a while, Robert, but eventually he got the king in, played g5, creating mating net options that weren't there before, and king g6 threatens h7 and rook f8. And, uh, okay, bishop f4 just delays it. You can play h7 first. You know you can even play here, Robert? Check out this. h7, king h8, king h6, threatening that's, knight g6. That's dirty. That Yeah, that's great. And if he, no matter what he does, it's over. Wait, wait, no, you can't do that. King H six is Rook H two. <gasps> Rook H two, and the knight would be pinned, and Black would be winning. <laughs> okay, let's let's hope. Oh, he didn't fall for. It. He played Knight F five. I was so close to being like, Danny, you're brilliant. I know. And I'm like, uh oh. Foiled again, right? Yeah. Yep. What are we gonna do tomorrow, Pinky? Try to take over the world. Every day of my life. Um. All right. Well, the mating net is is commencing here. The Raptors. The Raptors are uh, are on pace to fall. The asteroid flying in. Boom. Mosquitoes survive. Nothing else does. Hashtag winning. That's what's Hash about to happen. Yeah. This is. It's been over for so long that still I'm not convinced. Just because I, I like the the mosquitoes are really drawing this one out, which is really it's a typical mosquito thing. It's like where are they? Like, can anybody see mosquitoes here? All I know is I got bumps all over my arms. You know, my two year old's crying. I left the Benadryl at home, and Bob's your uncle once again. You know, <laughs> more like yeah, <laughs> Bob's your uncle. Well, right. Bob didn't close the the back porch, and that's why the mosquitoes got in your place in the first place. All right, well, um, the snowballs are are doing their thing. Let's let's move over to that match because this one should be over momentarily. Um, okay, the snowballs have already – sorry, they just actually already got that draw. Um, so they have indeed clinched their match, which was Jorg Meyer just taking a quick one against GM Donatello. I'll just show that on the analysis board real quick. A very, very quick rook ending reached. Um, the uh, – well, I guess we'll keep that main board up. We'll let David Klein finish his job against Kamayanga. But let's bring up Ina Agra's game against Skuala because this is the board four matchup of that last remaining affair between the Snowballs and the Turtles. And it's a wild one. I, I need Ina to do well here. I don't care if the Snowballs win, but she's on my fantasy team. So, Yeah, no, that would be a very nice win for her. She had a nice game earlier. I thought you were going to say match. that'd be very nice for you, Danny. No. That wasn't if she did well. Sarcastic. Oh, her position looks great, though. Wait, hold up. Uh, is a piece hanging on d4? Wait, I'm confused. My head hurts. So if knight takes d2, bishop d4, rook a6, knight takes f2, doesn't work. Oh, but knight b4, 
Fork yeah. City. Knight d4. The knight b4 here. Do it. Or knight f3 check and then knight b4. What up? Yeah, what's going on here? Take f3 and go knight b4. In Agrest for the win. That's what we want. Danny's fantasy team. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. No, she's, do she's doing work for your team here. So, yeah, knight takes f3. No, take back a night before seems to win. It looks like it's just game over if she finds that. Also, David Klein just cruising. Our D already David wins. Klein did did finish the job. The mosquitoes outlast the Raptors, and uh, we've got two games going here that we can check on. We've got this one here between Jerry seventy seven and Agress. We've got Boris ninety eight taking on um, I am Dimitri which, of course, is Dimitri Kolar's. We've also got the game Raphael, right? You've got Raphael and Donchenko. So we're bouncing around all over the place here. <laughs> but all right, him, Can you force him to change his username? Because it's I am Dimitri, but he's a GM. Like, can you make him become GM Dimitri? Maybe maybe, maybe he <laughs> wants to be remembered as, as I am. You know, there's nothing wrong with an I am title, Robert. There's Some of us have an I am title by choice. <laughs> Not everybody wants to be a grandmaster. What? Don't cry on camera. <laughs> uh, we don't have to change our usernames if we don't want to. <laughs> We're IMs. You're people too. I know. <laughs> International I know. masters are people too. <laughs> anyway. I didn't mean to make you cry. All right. Uh, all right. Markoya and Kolar's jokes aside, though, Markoya. Doing work as an FM against the Grandmaster here. I mean, this is this is a this is the win the Turtles needed all along. I think he's the FM by choice because his rating is an 24. FM by choice, right? Yep. Which stands for freaking master, yo. I'm a freaking master. I, I, that is what Fide has told me. It's the new FM title. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is just two pawns up for White. Kind of hopeless for Black here. The B pawn is blockaded for now, but. White's just move around. Yeah, and this position you can really massage, right? I mean, King G3 unpins the pawn so you can play F3 and E4, get another pass pawn going, and black is, is optically blockading but uh, literally losing. So now yep. you can even play F3. Can you really even take E3? You can, okay, um, maybe you can. Maybe Markoya has better technique than me, just maybe. So um... B7 looks good. Maybe he doesn't actually. Is Markoya just blundering the B pawn straight up? No, you can go rook D7 here. Ah, oh, okay. And just hit that knight. Yep, there it is. Because rook F7 checks and be really annoying. Not to mention if knight B5, rook B7 will probably yeah, be pleasant. Knight B5, rook B7 would be a pin, as well as the fact that, as Robert said, knight B5, rook F7 probably wins enough material over here to take it home. So. Well, actually, knight b5, rook f7 check is the precise way to win that piece because after king e8, rook b7, then bishop c6 comes with check. So. Yeah. Looking okay. good. Well, it's a little, it's too little too late for the turtles, unfortunately, even with this win that it looks like Markoya is about to get. Um,. Now the bishop can just come back to f3 and guard all the checks. Just say no to the nuisance of the knight. Indeed, Markoya does, and this one should be over. Uh, the 7-8 the game in Donchenko there on the left, probably just going to fizzle out to a draw. Yep, Donchenko is going to probably play it out for a while. Because Raphael, or sorry, 7-8 uh, is uh, way down on the clock. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, the double pawns don't look, at least aesthetically, it doesn't look good. It's totally fine for black. It should be a, an easy draw to hold here. But you still, even if you go F4 here and split the pawns, that's another way to try to play for more. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Dunchaker will play this one a little bit, even though there's no risk, right? Your team's already won the match. Yep. And Baden Baden's in first place, or they were before this week started. So they... It will continue to be in first place after this match, but they might want to try to put some distance between them and the gnomes. The gnomes had 11 and a half points. Yep. 
they're trying to catch up. Yeah, there, no, dude. I mean the snowballs. Remember, everybody, if you're if you're needing to be reminded of the format of the Pro Chess League, obviously winning every match is the mo is first and foremost. You get ten points for every match victory, but also every point scored matters in terms of your team's overall standings. And there will be blood. Believe us, there will be teams that probably are just barely left out of the playoffs because they lost a match in a lopsided way, right? It's one of the reasons why, as Robert's touching on, winning 11 and a half um, is big for the Gnomes. Every point matters in terms of just securing your place to get into the playoffs, so. Absolutely. Okay. So, Black is uh, trading off over there. Kolar's playing 94, but again, this is just a matter of technique for white, and it should be pretty simple. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that one behind. I'm going to move the other one to the other weird one, of course. I'm rooting for Ina Agress, as I've been joking about all day. She is on my fantasy team this week. And, but regardless of that, her team, she is a co-manager, along with her other half, Georg Meyer, and the snowballs are looking to be in pretty good shape here. Um, yep. They've She's already up. won the match, and they'll probably, they'll probably add a couple other points here. Knight G6 coming to F4. That looks pretty good. Why not? Yeah, the ninety six is coming out for she went rook to c three. I guess she what's she up? Two pawns and an exchange. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, look at that rook to g four coming. She wants to deliver a checkmate. That's what she wants to do. Just put that rook on g four. Follow it up with the next rook to c one. Put, put the rook on g four. Get the other rook going, and then play knight g six. There should be no way out. Maybe even knight g six first. Yeah, I like knight g six a lot. Okay, nope. So she wants to put a rook on the second rank. It's over on B2. So put that rook there. She's slow jamming this one, Jamie Fox style. Taking her time. Rook B2, now bring the knight in. Come on. What is going on? Yeah, I'm very confused by this. I, I have a knight that I want to put on G6. There we go. Huh, it took too long. Yeah, that was tough to watch. Yeah. What about you, Robert? I'm going to need a break after this. Oh, yeah? You're going to need a break? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, is right. Okay. Just... LOL. Okay, now I think just rook g3. Only thing you don't want to do is blunder with something like knight f5 and then black gets mated, right? Yeah, knight like f4, rook... suddenly knight f5 and then rook g8 and, and all and then black gets mated. So, as long as black isn't blundering mate, they should be in good shape here to win this one. Yeah, rook takes d4 now, and knight fork and f3. Very good. Yeah, that would be the the smoothest road to victory. Rook takes d4, king takes d4, knight f3, fork emote. I'll show it on the board for those who are into that. This oh, is yeah. what Robert's calling for. Ina may be taking her time. Maybe she doesn't see it. Either way, I'm going to spam the chat with fork emotes and thank everybody for being here one last time. Nope, she didn't see it. But we nope. still got some fork emotes out of it, out of the deal. And Donchenko over there, by the way, looks like he's winning. Donchenko came back and is actually going to... Because if he plays pawn e6 now, if you take back with the rook on e6, it'll play king d5. Yeah. So, again, just helping the snowballs get closer to matching the gnomes, right? Yep. Very nice move, king d5, forcing the winning king and pawn ending. That hurts. That's painful. Pawn takes... Or Actually... Both moves win. But pawn takes is probably... Whoa, pawn takes, pawn king. takes king. Okay, we we have to calculate. It's always weird, right? But oh, then you go c8 equals queen and bring your king to f7 and win the g. Yeah, pawn. king takes was most accurate, mainly because I think you take a7 and then play a5 and just get real fast, real fresh. Yep. A5 yep. is too fast. Yeah, that's the idea. Okay, well, Donchenko will beat Sevenik. The turtles will fall one more game behind there in the Central. Not their best year at this point for those of you who don't follow the Pro Chess League closely enough. Although, wait, what? Both sides are queening? Donchenko. Oh, no. That's a draw. He has a draw. Queen A1 check. Queen A1 check. Perpetual, Queen girl. Queen H1. Keep on the... There you go. There you go, boy. Keep on those diagonals, Holmes. Queen oh, H3 oh. check, yo. There you go. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who this character is or where he's from, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you were just doing there. Uh, I just want to—I want everyone to get excited about checks on the diagonals. Um, I'm—I'm I'm spreading the word. Okay, Ina does do her job. Let's move 
everything over to this game with Donchenko because the analysis board wants to teach us something here about where Donchenko went wrong. I say the analysis board like it has a life of its own, but black <laughs> was winning here. I'm sorry, white was winning. Yeah, Don't I'm, scratch get I'm us literally wrong. scratching my head right now because I'm very confused about what just happened. Hmm. Like, the checks are going to happen forever. The queen on B8 is not useful to block. But maybe we just... Did we just miscalculate that? I mean, maybe black was always getting the queen. No, there was no way. B6 was probably the blunder. When after um, white queened, you shouldn't play B6. You should play queen B6. That way you have more... Yeah, queen, queen B6 to block the check, and it's probably still winning. Yeah, big difference. And the reason, everybody, I know it's counterintuitive to not push your pawns closer to, to getting a queen, but you, you self-trap the king on these weird diagonal spots. And so usually the way you're winning these queen and pawn endings is by setting up what we call crossfire checks, right? You play like queen b6, and if they, if they give the wrong checks, okay, eventually what happens is an ability where you block a check and trade queens at the same time. So that's, that's really kind of what you're hoping for, something like oh. this. Queen Danny. g7, then the queen gets here, they check here, now you're blocking here, and eventually you create a scenario where the, uh, it, it's like this, okay, king b6, and if the queen checks, then queen to c5, and finally you win. So, you have to create, you have to create a position where the queen runs out of checks because of the threat of simplification. So this is like the general... The general way to try to win that endgame, and uh, instructive or not, at least you can know that a leopard can carry up to ten times its body weight into a tree. So you learned Dang. something today. Look at the collars game. Do you remember collars what we were looking game? Do you remember what we were looking at before? In I am Dimitri had just finished. How yeah. did? did <laughs> you were busy. White messed that up, right? Yeah, you were busy talking about how um, Donchenko blundered away a win. All of a sudden, I looked at this game. And, and... Kalar's held the draw. Well, so I guess it may end up being the same score that the Snowballs and the Turtles were kind of destined to reach, right? A 10-5 to 5 result. But Kolars drew a position that uh, he shouldn't have. And uh, Donchenko is is on his way to a peaceful result against Sevenik, so... What in the world? Remind everybody while you're with us, stick around. Robert and I will kind of summarize today's action. Don't go anywhere. Right after this, we will actually have our weekly highlights show with Levy Rosman and Wouter Bick. Uh, the, uh, the duo that's been bringing you kind of the keeping content going all week, even when the live coverage isn't, isn't active for the Pro Chess League. Levy Rosman and Wouter Bick at twitch.tv slash pro chess league. Speaking of things you can do to follow the pro chess league when we're not live, international master David Pruis at youtube.com slash pro chess league. He's bringing us you, bringing us you. Wow. Okay. Bringing you weekly pro chess lessons and us and you bringing all of us. Yep. He's the Oprah of pro chess league lessons. Okay. You know, his stuff is awesome. I was telling him that when I had a commentary with him, I really like watching his video lessons. He's, yep. he's very thorough. Well, uh, there you have it, everybody. The Central Division comes to a close, and uh, the scoreboard, probably the most shocking result of the day is actually the one that, if you just got here, will surprise you, is the 8-8 result there. The Migraines took a 7-5 to lead into that last round, Robert. Jean, Jean Christophe Duda beat Maxime vachet le with the black pieces, and that really set the tone for the rest of the Khan Blitzstreams to help come back there. Yeah, no, that was really an epic game. And I honestly wonder if that carries over into over the board chess because, yeah. um, you know, that was a game in the pro chess, like a rapid time patrol online. So maybe, you know, it's, it's just different, right? When you're sitting in front of your computer versus in a playing hall, it just there's just a psychological difference. But it might be very beneficial for him because he beat uh, Sergey Karyakin and Alexander Grishuk in speed chess championships. And I think that really was a motivating um, victories for him. Just he feels yeah. like he can play against the world's very best. Well, uh, yeah, huge there. Obviously, um, both teams still have plenty of chances to make their way up, but the Norway Gnomes in dominant fashion beat the Berlin Bears. The Mosquitoes completed an, uh, an evolutionary comeback over the Raptors, and the Snowballs won 10 and a half, 10 and a half, 5 and a half. When is the Pro Chess League live again? Well, our full schedule can be found at ProChessLeague.com. Robert and I just gave you that Eastern Central breakdown on February 7th. 
The Atlantic and Pacific will go at it again on February 12th in Week 6, and then the Eastern and Central throwdown on February 14th. Mark your calendars for the live finals. Stay tuned to chess.com slash news for the announcement as those details come together, but it is for sure that weekend. So make sure you don't get anything else planned, and we will tell you where you can buy your tickets to to come watch the Pro Chess League Finals in our live eSports event. So um, we are, we're about to raid Levy and Bigfoot, as we said, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Uh, let's give a final shout-out to Studio C, my boy Aaron. There he is. We're about to go on vacation. Yeah, I'm in the, can I go swimming? We're about to go. <laughs> there we go. We're about to rock out of here, Hawaiian shirt style. Uh, Robert, I'm going to bid you adieu. You need to go take a nap, buddy. I love you. You just did eight hours of coverage. Go to bed. I am tired. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's Denny. We are reunited, so how could I complain? It was great. Thank you, man. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, we're getting in that back half of the season now, right? Week six underway, so these teams are really fighting hard for the playoffs. It was it was awesome to have you here, and uh, well, you and I will be back at it next week. So you go, you go take a break. We're going to let the credits roll, and you and I are uh, are are done. So it was a pleasure, Danny.